All right, so session 75, Code Lands, Hoping to Spare. Um, our last session, technically our last two sessions, so uh, the last full session, uh, you guys basically, half the party, I should say. All right, whoever's eating chips or having their cat scratch on the microphone, please stop. Okay. All right, so <laughs> most of the party uh, made their way to Yeshmar. I say most of them because it was Silith and... Usul and Tolman that were still left back in the astral plane. Uh, While well, the rest of them are back to Yashamar. Uh, within Yashamar, they basically met, met a bunch of uh, elves, uh, to which Sylvia and Diddy start calling them racist, I do believe. Well, no, Diddy probably didn't call them racist. He's probably thinking that, but he wasn't saying it. Yeah, I didn't say it. Yeah, Sylvia was the one that was saying it, pretty much, out loud. <laughs> yeah. It was just Diddy saying, so what does that mean in your language? Oh, let's say it again. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they uh, they were teleported just outside of the, the town of Geshemar with, thanks, uh, with the help of Kudwar, and were told to ask for Arunu. But since they didn't have Brevin or Jodel with them, basically the elves were very uh, reluctant to trust them. So they basically escorted them into town. Uh, led you into a meeting hall where you guys eventually got your council with uh, Arunu, the uh, the Netiarch, or the high priestess of the Circle of Leth. And long story short, she listened to your story, she believed you, and she kind of scolded upon the uh, the uh, elven high guard to basically go around and apologize to all you guys. And then from there, you guys were going to try to figure out what you want to do next. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I missed there. There's a lot of back and forth banter that went back and forth. But was there anything else important that I missed in that part of the, the summary, guys? No, that seems to be all right. Um, <laughs> and we're just waiting. We're waiting for Brevin um, to turn up so they can feel better. Yeah, because yeah. Brevin vanished back to the astral plane. So meanwhile, back in the astral plane, Silith, Usul, and Toman uh, had gone over the mountain range. That the other group went under the mountain range, missed them completely, made their way to the uh, the gate that led into Limbo. Uh, but before they got to the gate, they noticed there was three humanoids there, along with a slotty that was in chains. Uh, as they approached, uh, they kind of, pers I guess, Silas Persuasion, at least that's what he thought at the time. Silas Persuasion kind of got him a little bit closer, so they got, had a civil conversation. And the uh, I think one of them ended up taking his helmet off and basically presented himself. And I had described what he looked like, but I don't know if you guys ever rolled or knew exactly what kind of, I guess, race he was. But out of character, they were, they were uh, Gizzari, and they told the group that they had uh, captured a slot and was waiting for their uh, their ship to come back by and pick them up. Um, so Usul Toman joined the party as well, and then the uh, the main guy, the gift guy, said he could open the gate up for you guys. He started opening it up, and that's when they attacked. The, the slotty was just kind of holding the chains, wasn't really holding him back, and... Uh, after about midway through the battle, the three gifts transformed back into the normal slotty selves and basically almost killed, uh, at least Silith, for that matter. I think Silith got hit with a critical... Uh, Silith fire. had two HP. Yeah, he got hit with a, a critical hurl flame from the, the, the main green slotty and barely escaped. But uh, the slotty probably could have killed at least one of them, but uh, for some reason they didn't. They just opened up the portal and they escaped out, to which I think all of you guys end up either were told or you figured out on your own that uh, the fact they didn't kill you means they were probably needing blood samples for their scrying purposes. And I, as I recall, oh, I think... Were they, go ahead. <laughs> were they all smoking? And, and saying, yeah, impregnated, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I think even Usul... Uh, he's, I think he's probably the one that came up or figured that out first. And I think, you still correct me if I'm wrong, as you cracked one of them with your ogre fist or ogre, whatever it was, um, you actually got a little bit of his mucus or whatever it was on him. And like you said, something along the lines of, well, well two can play at that game or something like that. Is that correct? That is correct. So after that, um, you guys try to look around for any signs of the other party. And you saw all kinds of tracks and stuff, but there was just too much of a battle there. You guys couldn't really figure out if they were your friends or what they were. Uh, you guys uh, vamped through the uh, the, uh, the gate. No signs of the slotty. You marked your spots with your return potions. Came back out, and that's when uh, Silith used his 
wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and, and teleported himself back into the Caver's Guild back in Mucklestones. Out of character, which you guys didn't know, is Brevin was waiting there at the Mucklestone Gate for the, possibly the demon to go away, so he'd go in after you guys to try to find you to rescue you. So, he may be going to his own certain death with an astral plane, and you guys left him again. Good job. Well, <laughs> technically we're just arriving back in Mucklestone, so it depends whether he's... I know. <laughs> you didn't know. I'm like, oh, oh, well. shit, I can't get these guys together. <laughs> so, that's where we left off. Uh, the other group had just finished their meeting. Uh, they were... Uh, I think at least Quarren was exhausted. Uh, the rest of you guys ma uh, made your con save, but you still haven't had a long rest yet. And the other group just bent back into Mucklestones as well. Okay? Any questions on all that? I'm nope. still wondering about this critical uh, dex thing I did. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. I, I forgot all about that. Was that Rand? Was that you who wrote that on Wednesday? On uh, which one? You said about the, that critical uh, dex thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, <laughs> so Phyllis was about to do the exact same thing to teleport us out right before we completed our mission. <laughs> and uh, and Toman, Toman got a, a crit on his dex check to, to slap a hand over his <laughs> Yeah, basically slap him in the face, keep him from uh, finishing the incantation because you guys never went through the portal to mark your spots again. So it's like, okay. We, we killed the guys, so they're gone. Let's go. <laughs> Silith had two HP. Silith just wanted to live, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we uh, get started, I don't think I ever did it to the uh, the smaller group, so I'm going to do it right now. I need uh, Silith, Toman, and Usul all to give me uh, uh, con saves because it's been more than 24 hours since you've had a long rest. <laughs> One con save coming up. Two. Okay. So Tolman gets it, but uh, Silith and Usul, both of you guys are suffering one level of exhaustion right now. Because it's been more than 24 Time hours since you've had a rest. I'm sorry, what? Time for a nap. Well, if you think so. All right, so let me start off with that group that's in Mucklestone. So let me switch to the map for Mucklestones here. And we'll start with those guys. Do I still have my Mucklestones map? Oh, here it is. I'm not sure if I've even dropped you guys in the map here in the right spot. Caver's Guild by Photius. Right. So you guys would basically teleport your way back, right back to this. There was a, uh, a small shrine to Timora in here. I think that's why you picked that one, right, Silith? Yep. Okay. So you guys all bamf right back in the middle of the floor here again. Uh, not quite as crowded this time. There's like maybe a half a dozen gnomes in there. But... Uh, this time, everybody kind of freaks out for a second. And they say, oh, it's them again. Nobody's on fire. No, nobody's on fire this time. <laughs> All right, fellas, what are you doing in the Caver's Guild? Sil has pretty much fallen over, tired, exhausted, like, wounded. So, uh, he just cast that spell to get us back here. He's been through a lot. He was feared from that friggin' thing. So while he was running from magical invisible griffins, and now he's uh, he's he's ready to have a, have a pint. <laughs> <laughs> so you crawl up to the bar there. Photius is behind the bar. You start coming around the bar as, as you guys come in. Say what? You you guys were just you were just here. Did you? So. <laughs> Silith will just like slap a bloody hand on the counter with a coin in it and be like, just give me some ale. It's like, well, weren't you guys going back to... I don't know, I can kind of see Salem carrying it. Hey, uh, Diddy, may want to put your mic on mute. I'm pretty sure that's your wife or someone in your family. No one else here is Australian. Oh, anymore. thank you. Don't tell on him, that's... <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Hey, I think it's another player. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Was another player? We got. We have another Aussie on the, the team. I don't so. know about. Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. <It's> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll just meet, I suppose. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Fortius will see you kind of, kind of hurt there a little bit, and he'll start pouring you a beer. He's like, well, "Aren't you guys wow. like? Aren't you going back to oh. find your friends?" So it's not answering. He's just putting his head down on the bar. Fortius will look over. Over Silith, over at uh, Toman and Usul. 
So what happened? What's going on? I need a pint first. <laughs> I had an out-of-body experience. Uh, okay. I'll tell them the slotty were waiting for us, and they were tricked. They were tricking us. They're tricking you, huh? He's pouring you guys a couple ales there. Says, well, did you did you find your friends, though? So it's going to shake his head. Ah. No. So I guess the dragon got well, him. We accomplished the mission. We, we, we got our markers placed. Ah, well, that's, that's a damn shame. Damn shame. So, oh, as an aside, did Rufus truly get left behind? <laughs> no, no, we never brought we never brought Rufus. Rufus oh, okay. Himself. Thank you. I, I thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that before. Well, that's a good point. Would you have oh, left him here? I popped him in. I, I told him get it, that dog out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but what I don't know, Tolman, is it, did you leave him in Mucklestone or did you leave him there at the Mucklestone gate? I'm sorry. It was the, the, the village or the gate. It was the gate when we went through. I thought. Yeah, I would have left him at the gate, told him to stay away from me. Okay, so you're not at the gate. You're in the town. So he's still back at the gate, probably thinking you're dead. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's I'm only gonna, been like eight hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to finish my drink and go find my, my, my dog. Okay. So, Fotis will offer up you guys, you know, more drinks, whatever you want. Says, hey, guys, what's, what's next? Are you guys going to go do this on your, by yourselves now? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, let's say Silas doesn't want to really say much, but he's going to be like, we need to go back to uh, find Kudwar. Like, well, I haven't seen Kudwar in at least a day, but uh, you know where he is. Go look for him at the keep if you want. Don't worry about, don't worry about paying for this. this. This is on me. You guys, looks like you had a rough day. And I just want to see if anyone else has come back since we've been gone. I, this has been... Chaos, literally. And Fodius will kind of look you over a little bit, Thomas. Says, ah, I see you got your eye back. Someone help you out there? I honestly don't remember where I got the eye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was Cudware, wasn't it? Yeah, Cudware. That was, that was like four sessions ago. <laughs> yeah. But oh, that's good for Thomas. I don't remember where the hell this came from. I just, I just, <laughs> I just got an eye. I don't know. It popped in there. It grew back. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, the days blur together. It's just back. It's on happy four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's your guys' intention then? Find Cudwire. And Tomans wants to find Rufus. <laughs> okay. And get around yes. this. All right. So, as you guys walk outside the Cavers Guild, you'll see it's now like midday. Uh, you'll see the Get Along Pub making its way close to you guys. But it's midday. It's high noon. The sun's in the middle of the sky. And uh, there's people on the, walking the streets, and they kind of recognize you guys a little bit, and they'll ask you kind of the same questions Fodius did. That they uh, they heard that uh, you guys were heading back, but haven't seen the others. Then what's going on? So unless you guys are having small chit chat with the folks, I'm assuming you're going to head to the keep. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that yes. sounds good. Okay. You guys make your way to the keep, and you find it really quick that uh, Cudwar is not there. Hasn't been since last night. I mean, you'll, you'll see the same guards that you saw last time you came through here. So what, you, you, you guys were just here last night, and Cudward took you guys. He, he hasn't been back since. I thought he was with you guys. Long story, we just need to find Cudward. Is he back? Can we get back? To, he's probably still there waiting for us. Uh, that, uh, I don't know. Let me, he walks inside and. Starts hailing for someone to come help. And a few minutes pass, and you'll see the, the old Gillard, little wiry guy you guys got down the mines, come walking out there a little bit. What? What? What are you? You're back already. But why? Why is. Why, why is Cudward not back? What happened? What'd you do? You never saw Cudward. Cudward brought you guys to the, the gates. I haven't seen him since. I thought he was with you. He didn't follow us through. What? Uh, so what? Okay. Was... So, and he's like, puts his hands on his head. He's like looking around all nervous, like confused. Okay, so, so what are we doing here? 
What's 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 going on? I'm so confused. Then you're part of the club. Welcome. <laughs> so it's gonna ex- semi impatient and still quite bloody that uh, we went to the gate. We came back to another me- to to another method. Cudware's probably still at the gate waiting for us. We need to go back and tell him we're okay. <sighs> okay. This is like you guys are getting a lot of. Uh, never mind. Follow me. He kind of starts shuffling his way back towards the back down the stairs. Third verse, oh. same as the first. Lead you downstairs. Got you guys blindfolded again. You guys feel yourself walking up on some kind of disc. Go through a couple of spots. Bright lights, dim lights. You hear the you hear the forest. Step down. They take the blindfold off. You walk over to the uh, Michael Stones. And. Guys, we'll see. Let me switch to this one again. Should see Rufus. So back on this map. Oh look, we're all here. Well, not all of you. I gotta update this. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> what are you freaking out about? Do I remember, do I remember that thing? I don't remember that thing. <laughs> oh, that wait, that was the chant thing. <laughs> that's uh, I, I'm trying to figure out if that's an Anthony reaction or it's a Silver reaction, but whatever it is, that, that, that's pretty good. That's a that's an Anthony reaction. What the? I'm like I don't remember seeing this last time we were here. Tick tick nuke. <laughs> All right, but Brevin is not there. So you see, like a tick nuke, you know, the giant tree is kind of standing over watch over the uh, the gate that you guys went through here. And you see Kudwar, and uh, I don't think you've met him before, but you see mm-hmm. another individual uh, dressed in some robes, like he's got some kind of a a breastplate or some kind of uh, uh, iron or metal uh, armor underneath his robes. All standing there, watch, and they all turn as you guys come through the the parted trees. And the first one to speak up is Cudwar. Says, what? 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 Where's Brevin? <laughs> Here we go again. Like, Same verse. Second. <laughs> so, uh, Phil's so gonna like wave his hand and be like, "Long story short, we went, we did the mission, we dropped our potions, we traveled, we came back." To the caver's yield. Never Cudwar kind of slaps his forehead. Looks at all the gods. So, there was, when the others, uh, so did you, did you see the others? They came through here already. Did you, did, did you see them? Do you know what happened? No, I haven't seen them. What happened? Oh, so he kind of explains to you guys how the other group came through. Actually, I forget that I tell you guys. Was it like in the morning when you guys came through? I don't know if I told you what time it was when you came through. Uh, I don't remember either. They uh, were well, no, they it should, they whatever time it is now. They were what three hours difference between us. It's probably been about four or five hours since they came through the gate. Is what it's like. I'll so, go with that. So it was yeah. like morning, mid morning, early morning, sometime around there when they came through the gate, and. Uh, He'll share with you the fact that they had uh, some kind of a demon that was chasing them right up to the gate. They came through right before it got there, and they waited for a couple hours. And then he brought Sebastian. He'll introduce Sebastian here. This uh, this is a temple cleric, that one of the refugees from Injast. And they'll explain to you about how they set up a, a magic circle just right outside of this uh, portal here that Sebastian uh, was able to cast for them. And then Kudwar opened the gate. And then the demon basically stepped through the portal, but was stuck in this magic circle. And then Sebastian proceeded to cast banishment on the thing while it was in there. And then it popped back where it came from. And they were just waiting, hoping that Brevin comes back through the gate sometime soon. And that's where they are. And they'll also, Sebastian will share with you that this banishment thing is... There's no guarantee that it's not going to come right back in a few hours. It could be sitting on the other side of that portal right now, and we don't know it. So we're kind of at a loss what to do. Um, so it's going to be like, well, uh, sounds like you had an eventful day. Here's how hours went. And he's going to fill them in on uh, how they got uh, tricked by the slotty. Completely not. And... Uh, Basically, just be like, so as far as we know, even if Reverend makes it to the portal, he could run into more slotty. Yeah, and Kodawar just kind of, again, puts his, his palm up to his forehead, says, uh, 
let's just hope his uh he can he's he's sneaky as he say he is uh, that's why he wanted to go alone but holy crap that was a big ass demon and Sebastian's like, yeah, I've, I haven't seen one like that in a while. That that one was pretty. He was. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to mess with him. So, <laughs> what do we do now? Sebastian says. So we have no idea where Brevin is. If he's alive, when he's coming through this gate, there might be a demon on the other side of the portal. <sighs> Tick Nook just kind of turns his head very slowly, kind of cocks it to one eye. Uh, Dragonborn. Send him through. So it's going to be like, no, 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 no. We, uh, we had a mission. It had the potions. We did the thing. We're supposed to, we're supposed to go now to see, um, uh, Jadel. Yeah, Jadel. Like, that's that's the most important, right? I'm sure Brevin will be fine. Does he really need us? Good word, China. Yeah, no, yeah, no, you, know, you, you don't understand. Brevin was your guide to Limbo. Not have Jodell, you ever seen, It was Brevin. Ha, have you ever seen a lizard sweat? <laughs> He's like, uh, not that I've been paying attention. No. <laughs> uh, uh, blah, pardon, sorry. Um. So it's going to recant about the fact that there's already a very angry dragon in there that might uh, tear him to pieces. He really doesn't want to add a demon to the list. And tell me I forgot to mention to you, Rufus is there. As soon as you come walking out of the trees, he'll run up to you. Can I turn it into a big giant puffball as I hug him and roll around the ground with him and pet him? <laughs> okay, that's awesome. You should have control over him now. Thank you. All right, so Cudwire is going to still stand with his hips, with his hands on his hips. I, we, I, he, he's like just a loss for words. I don't, I, I don't know what to do. We, we've got either he's got to find another way back, or we got to go in after him. Can we wait for him here? We, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> and he kind of points up to. Uh, the giant treant sitting over the over the gate. Tick Nook said, I can wait some more. I've got the time. So it's gonna be like, see look, this guy this guy knows what's right. If we uh, you know, just wait out it wait it out, like he's gonna like do some little little mental math. It took us at least like what? Almost half a day to travel? So maybe by nightfall again, Brevin will be back. <laughs> All right, Kedwa's going to look to Usul and Tolman. Is this, is this what we're doing? We're going to wait? I'm going to take it now. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to um, rest. I, I, <laughs> I'm still scratching roof for ten years while he's licking my face all over. Uh, uh, we can't leave him. We, we, we need to go back, but we do need to rest first. We're in no shape. So it's like... At least a nap. Maybe not a night, but a nap. And and Cudwater shouts, well, I can, I can spare a couple heals, but I don't want to tap out Sebastian. He can only cast this uh, this banishment so many times before he's tapped out. And he goes, and Sebastian shouts, yeah, and the magic circle takes me like a minute to cast. It's not like I can just cast it when he shows up. I've got to kind of plan for this, you know? <laughs> So it's gonna be like uh, suggest go along with the um, Tomans and Asul's thing. It's like, how about you let us rest first? And he's, he's gonna like wave at his bloody robes and like scales that are all chipped and ripped. And so once we're feeling a little bit more up to it, we'll uh, we'll see. Maybe we can try and open it then. And Cudworth's like, at this point, I don't know what else to say. So sure, if that's what we want to do, I guess we can wait a few more hours. Just, for all I know, Brevin could be another side right now battling that demon. So it walks over to the side and lays down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are the rest of you guys following suit? Yeah. For yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So just so I'm just gonna play my lean up against a tree, put Rufus in my lap, and take a short rest. Okay, Cudwar's going to ask you guys how long of a rest do you want. 
before he wakes you I'd up. I'd say about eight hours. Eight hours? <laughs> I'm going to need a short rest. Sil's going to slit an eye at him and be like, well, if we wait half a day for Bevan to come back, it's 12 hours, so waking up in eight. <laughs> eight hours. Bevan could be dead by then. Or he could be fine. <sighs> okay. Eight hours it so is. Gonna, the other thing Sil's going to say is, if he's our guide, then shouldn't he be, you know, reliable? I don't know. I don't know. And Sebastian says, hold on, hold on. Maybe what he's saying makes sense. Maybe if we we wait longer, Brevin will keep distance, won't engage the demon. And then when we do open the gate, hopefully he'll be close enough to see it. And that'll be his chance to try to sneak by, get by the demon. It's better that so, than me casting it now and him not being there. And Kedwar's like, uh, okay, okay, your logic makes sense. Hopefully Brevin thinks the same thing. So those other things going to be like, what, do you, what if the demon's not even there? Then Brevin's fine. We'll go in there, we'll miss Brevin, then we'll be this whole thing all over again. True. And Sebastian said, but if he's there, that's a bad mother. All right, so all you guys are taking a long rest is now what I'm hearing, correct? Yep. Okay. So then I'm going to switch over to the other group while you guys are taking your rest. Okay. All right, so back over in Yeshomar. Oh, have you removed corn from the... Or are we NPCing him for a little bit? I, I, I got him covered for right now. Okay. Well, I, I, my, my only other thought was to have Sylvia be the talker instead because yeah, <laughs> he was the one that was talking to the, the leaders, right? Right, right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if you still want to keep playing him since you're playing on my time, so I'm okay with that. I just I just know a couple of things that I'm probably going to interject that uh, no, no. he's going to No, 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 that's fine. Okay. No, 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 that's fine. I didn't know if you were actually just removing him straight up or because we, we've had several NPCs roll through that you have removed over time, but right. I wasn't sure what you're doing. So he's still there with you guys, I mean, physically. Just uh, i got to work out a way for him to either continue to be NPC or he'll kind of bow out or how we're going to work that out. Okay? Um. His arm gets burned off and he dies. <laughs> <laughs> By a party member that nails on him from the back with a man. <laughs> All right, so at this point, uh, when we left off, Aruna was, was kind of pointing out, I think, to Diddy, some of the other towers and stuff and pointing out the different gods that they, uh, that they uh, uh, worship within the city. Um, the rest of you guys, I think, who was it? I think Professor P, you said you want to try to find out um, what you could do with Baymax within Limbo, as I recall. Is that yeah, right? we're just, just kind of researching Limbo and how that affects constructs, and, and that was kind of the general idea. Okay. And Quarren was going to go uh, try to talk to uh, Thosil, the uh, the head elven guard, to kind of look at their defenses and see about their training and stuff like that. Um, so he probably would have walked off with them, unless you guys have anything else you want to go with him, or Sillith, if there's anything you want to kind of have him role play. It's up to you. No, that was that was his thing originally, was just that he was because we were just waiting for Brevin, right? Right. Okay. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, Didi, you wanted to spend some time with the Circle of Light to find out what they know about Limbo. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. And Sylvia fell asleep last time, so what would Sylvia be doing during this time frame? Your mic's muted, Kev. Sorry, my dog was fighting, so I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt everyone, but uh, yeah, I sort of, uh, I guess, nodded off to the uh, council from the lady. Okay, so I think if I didn't so, recap it, so she basically scolded the head of the Elven Guard to you guys for being so rude. He went to each one of you guys individually and apologized, and like waited for you to shake his hand, and everything, and we kind of rolled. Apology not accepted, but okay. <laughs> But he really did give – Diddy can, can vouch for this. He really did kind of give a, a heartfelt um, uh, apology, and Arunu tried to explain away his his harshness because he can be overzealous about protecting the the, uh, the city of Yeshomar. But mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. And uh, Twig, <laughs> I don't think uh, you gave me any direction as to what you were going to do 
as well. Twig would probably just walk, be want to spend time around the city and just relaxing. I mean, nothing really special. Okay. And, and before I forget, so you're still walking around with one eye missing. Correct. Are you going? To, I mean, someone from the council probably would have pointed that out to you. The fact, I and mean, said, so you need you know, assistance with that. We have people that can help. If you would uh, take no, it's help. fine. <laughs> okay, you just want to stay with one eye, be a one-eyed ranger. Yep. Alrighty then. Man, now you're making me feel bad, Jason. Jeez, I had a one-eyed <laughs> ranger. What I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to get it fixed, like I did Tolman, but that's okay. You can be a one-eyed ranger. <laughs> if in his research, Doctor or uh, Professor P stumbles across something that would replace uh, <laughs> Twig's eye, he will make note of it. Well, that is a good point. I mean. Uh, Professor P, you would notice not even rolling that uh, within the town of Mucklestones at that magic shop, they had those those magic eyes that uh, were made for that purpose. That uh, you place an eye, it's missing, and it actually has the bonus of having dark vision in it as well. But that's back in Mucklestones. He'll he'll remember to to mention that to Twig next time he sees him. Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, Twig just gets a nice eye patch made to cover it up. So. Okay. All right, so Arunu said you guys she's going to make accommodation for you guys in the Murs Inn. And the Murs Inn, let me fix my map here. I only see a corner of it. Bad DM. So the Murs Inn is way over here. So as you guys either take a walk outside, it's kind of hard to miss it because right over here is the giant uh, um, waterfall coming down into a large pool right here and that turns into like a small little river kind of flows down through the city into it finally comes out to a much larger crystal lake than what you see here right now the, the, the crystal lake itself is probably about four times the size of the, this entire city but it's all pretty much down here at the, at the foothills and the murder's Inn is located up here on the cliffs just across this one little pool right next to the waterfalls okay so let's do this one at a time let's start off with uh with diddy did you were walking around with Aruna as she was pointing out some of the towers. What kind of questions or things you want to do at this point? Uh, so I think I was already talking to them about which god is in which tower. So I know that um, I think it was Tarth was um, uh, Corellin. And, and then I sort of asked where everybody is. So I think they're already placed. So Deeson's at the... Uh, or to see, and she's in the Hall of Legend, is that right? And Fossil's in the Protectors. She sits at the Baskin Steps. Groland is at Observatory, or that's they're just placed there. No, pretty much and, the, the three uh, towers: the Tower of Ta, the Tower. Yeah. Of, I'm sorry, Tower of Tay, Tower of Ooze, mm. and the Tower of mm. Tears. That's the three main, I guess, Elven worshiping temples within the city. I mean, there's other okay. small shrines and stuff throughout the city, but those three are the main three. Uh, that I shared with you, I think, also in the uh, um, the campaign forum notes. As well. Yeah, so I'll just get. A, I'm just writing them down. So Tower of Tar, which deity was that again? Tower of Tear, Tears. Uh, um, yeah, Tears. You can do Tears, Ooze, and um, and Tay if you want. I mean, you. What do you mean you can do that? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'll ask her what were the gods for those ones again. I've just. I'm writing them down in my little journal thing. Okay, no worries. So within the yeah. Temple of Tears, yeah, that's Druidic mm -hmm. for nature or harmony, if you care, um, mm -hmm. is Sylvanus, mm -hmm. Eldath, and yep. I'm probably going to butcher how you say this, Mayaliki. Maliki, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, and Ooze? And the Tower of Ooze. Let me pull up my notes here. Ooze is Druidic for prosperity, if you care. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Shanti. Mm -hmm. uh, Denier, D E N E I R, mm -hmm. and Milil, M I L I L. Okay, and Ta uh, or Tay? Tower of Tay, which is Druidic for moon. That is Selun, or Selun, mm -hmm. how do you say it? Coralon. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Sehanine, Moonbow. Mm -hmm. Those three. Gotcha. All right. So, right, yeah, so, I'll just... And each one of those yeah. uh, uh, characters you see down there, those are kind of the heads of uh, of uh, each tower. Mm. They were part of that inner circle that you guys met in the meeting hall. Yep. Okay. Um, 
So I'll ask her, does she stay in any of the towers or she's got a, is she here in oversight? Uh, she'll tell you, she pretty much makes her rounds every day through all the towers, but her actual yep. home and office is up above the Baskin steps. Uh, over here uh-huh. to see that's where her, uh, that's yep. where her yep. character tooling is. Yep. Okay. So that's her place. Okay. Um, and then I'll just say, so we're up against an interesting um, adversary with the with the uh, slut um, being able to change into other people. Uh, we've been able to work out a way to know if it's them, um, but there was something that I wanted to tell you without the rest of your people being here was there's um, inside of each of the slut, there's a, a gem inside of their heads. Um, if they've been born and returned to the to, um, the chaos crystal, in a sense, um, do you, do you know anything about the crystal in the center of the chaos realm? And she kind of looks at you, knowing you. So you're referring to the spawning stone, correct? I am. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all I know is what I, what I've been told. I've never actually traveled there myself. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really care to. It's a yep. dreadful place, but. Uh, yeah, I've all I've heard is what I've been told. Now, I imagine uh, Brevin's contacts within the limbo may know more than me, but uh, mm. I'm not sure what you've been told. But my understanding is the the slotty, when they are initially born, they don't have this crystal gem within their themselves, and that they migrate mm. back to the spawning stone. I don't know if it's once a year, several times a year, whatever, for their mating ritual. And once they're done with that mating ritual, they are somehow are imbued, uh, impregnated. I don't know how it happens, but then they gain the gem within their bodies after, mm. this, after this mating ritual, whatever they go through. Yep. Yeah, that sounds right. I'll show her. I'll show her um, what one of them looks like, and I'll say the the interesting part is the stone is somehow linked to the spawning stones and they have some sort of like mind, i think some sort of i mind. think it's probably like a group mind they can they're like a hive um i believe i mean we we're, we're going to check this out a little more in depth so it's it's just a it's just an assumption at the moment but i would think that's the way the big brood queen or the one that takes care of them um uh, they call them sort of like a mother. Um, it and keeps sure, them all sure in line. Otherwise, that so sure, correct. It's been it's been called the guardian, at least by yeah the guardian the gif. Yeah, yeah, it is the guardian. I think that's how they control. But there's not just one. There's three. Um, and with any chaos source that's thirded, I'm pretty sure we could, you know, cause a little bit of disruption amongst them. But we have no way of working out how to use our mind to contact the stone to cause some sort of chaos inside of the crystal because that power would be too much. So is it possible that your people could develop something that might be able to send a surge through one of these stones and sort of disrupt the network to give us a little bit of time to do what we need to do um, with the crystal? Okay. And she said, I, we have it tried that before haven't thought about it i could definitely you know consult with the my counsel and see mm. if there's something that uh, we think we could do but my answer right now is yeah. i don't know but she also wants to retrace her steps and you mentioned before that there were three guardians that's news to me yeah i believe there's more than one um so we'll find out we'll we'll get more of that information um <laughs> But if they're, and I'm pretty sure of that, aren't I? Yeah, out of game, that there's definitely more than one of them out there. Okay, she's again. I've I've only heard of the one guardian, so if there's more than one, then... I, I, I mean, from what I know, from what Diddy knows, there, there's been talk of there. There's actually more than one, from what I saw. Well, that's that's not uh, good news. But uh, let yeah, me, let me have my uh, my time with my counsel. I'll ask them, and she says, uh, mm. "You want me to? Can I? Have, you got the gems with you, right?" I do, I do. Uh, massive disclaimer on them, though, just so you know. Um, there's the possibility if we start tampering with their world, they'll be aware of us. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll keep that in, in mind. And, and she notices that you've got it in a bag of holding. She goes, tell you what, do, mm-hmm. 
you keep it uh, in there, and mm. I'll, I'll let the council know if we need to uh, examine one, we'll call for you. Not a problem. I'll give it to you then. Um, <laughs> thanks for helping us as well. Um, my life or, you know, can help you and defend your city. If that ever becomes a possibility, I would be more than willing. Um, and with that, he'll say, well, um, the plane of limbo, do you know anything else specifically about it? I'll sort of step out what I know and see if she knows anything else that we don't. And shoot, I'm not sure how much I've already shared with the other people, but she shares with it's, it's a plane of chaos. There could be mm -hmm. fire one minute, water the next, you know, perfectly breathable air the next. It just It's a constant changing elemental storm. And mm. it all swirls around the spawning stone. Not sure if it originates from the stone itself or the stone feeds off of it or how the two really interact. But it's a, it's a place that uh, very few travel to. Hence why mm -hmm. I think why Jodell's got you hooked up with Brevin and his contacts there. The Gith are one of the, the rare I guess, species that have found a home there, found a way to control the mm. chaos. Other than that, there's uh, I'm not sure what all resides within the chaos, other than the slotty itself. Uh, there's I think uh, Brevin's told me stories of some other type of creatures that uh, can thrive or live. Right. We're going to call it within that chaos, but again, mm. I've never witnessed one or seen one myself. Mm. Uh, our our big challenge is that we need to get to the spawning stone, do something to it, which will take time, but remain undetected um, by the slud. So, look, I'm hoping invisibility works, but um, I wouldn't count on it. Um, not that close to such a powerful artifact. I would think that thing's going to have its own defences. So um, one of the other things we would ask if you were at all able is two things that would really, really help everybody. One is finding a way to be able to detect a slide in its hidden form. And the other one would be if there's anything that um, that you can do to help us um, stay undetected if we were in um, or around the stone because thousands and thousands of slides will kill everybody instantly. And I've had a dream about it. It's just how do you get to it um, by either A, causing so much disruption that they go to the disruption and leave the stone, or how do we go to the stone and look like a slarty so they don't care we're there? And she'll kind of pull you to the side a little bit so she's not out in the open with everybody else. Hmm. Says, says uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but the gifts have developed some kind of, a, for lack of a better term, a cloaking device for their ships while they're within the plane of chaos. And wow. I'm almost positive that's how Taloom did this uh, the last time this happened. But again, Brevin and the Gith will probably be able to expand expound upon that more than more than I can. All I know is what I've read in the legends that there was some kind of a uh, device within their ships that was able to I don't know hide them, cast illusion, something to where. They made them like one with a chaos. Oh, that would be perfect. Um, all right. Yeah, well, I mean, so you would think um, Brevin and the Gith hold the secret for that. So we'll find that out from them. Um, besides the Gith, is there any other race inside of Limbo that lives and breathes and calls it home besides the Slard? She said, all I know is what I've told you, the, the gift, the slot, mm -hmm. and there's some other creatures that somehow are at home in the chaos. No doubt some kind of elemental, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the slot and gift are the, the two most dominant within that plane. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so um, maybe if we could make some sort of, I don't know, uh, Look, causing a war between them would be unfair on the Gith. It's it's just if there's any way I can make them fight each other, then that might be helpful. But um, I'm not sure how to, it, unless it's using these Mind Stones to cause, like, feedback that, you know, maybe drives them a little bit more bonkers. 
<laughs> in a right. certain area. Right. Um, but that's all I can think of. But I've got the stone whenever you need it. Right. Um, and with that, I'll just um, take my leave and head down to the temple um, of Tars where my leaky is and uh, and go and, and Eldath, which are both of my, both of my ones. So um, I will head down in that direction. And okay. that's it for me. All right, we'll see bows and bid you good day. I'll kiss a hand and do the same thing. <laughs> okay. All right, so next let's go to, okay, Silithan back there, Usul's back there. Sylvia. Yes. So what are you doing during this time frame? Again, remind me. So we are free to sort of wander amongst yeah, I mean, she's giving you a kind of free reign. She's kind of scolded uh, um, Full Seal, the the head elven guard, and there'll be someone there to kind of either show you around or they'll assign like an acolyte or something like that to kind of answer your questions and walk with you. There's obviously, obviously going to be someone that would escort you guys towards the, the Murs Inn since you may or may not know how to get there or where it is. All right. Um, I'd like to see... Um... I would like to see what kind, what the what kind of markets they have here, or, or shops, anyways. Okay, and I guess the acolyte that's walking with you. Is anyone going to walk with Sylvia? Are you guys all kind of going your your separate ways? I'll go with Sylvia. Okay. All right. So they'll escort both you guys down towards the uh, the central market, kind of right down here in the center of it. I said mark on the map right there. And you guys make your way down through the streets. So again, same as like before, you almost like trees that are growing out of the stone itself. Lots of vines covering everything else, but uh, everything just some very, very nice architectural, nice immaculate stonework. Uh, the, almost like some carved archways, everything made up, all kinds of different kinds of wood. But down the marketplace itself, it's basically like a bunch of tents. Uh, some makeshift hunts made out of like um, burlap or some other kind of... of, of uh, non-leather type material some kind of cloth but uh there's this is pretty much predominantly all going to be vegetables i think i shared with you guys before that uh corn would have said as you guys are coming in here or uh, just by observation now that there's no meat uh, consumed within this city everybody here is 100 percent vegan is there a certain okay. particular kind of shop you're looking for sylvia or um i guess I mean, I'd be I'd be kind of looking if there's any uh, shops that have might have some, uh, I guess, more magical wares in them rather than your your daily uh, go tos or your blacksmiths, maybe armories or that kind of thing. Okay, so you said a whole lot of stuff there. So magical stuff. As you start asking around, there's gonna be like the, the same kind of simple common stuff like you kind of saw in Mucka Stones but a lot more mm -hmm. nature-based, I guess, so to speak. It'll be like something that uh, allows you to you know, make the sound of a mouse or something that allows you to call in owls or you know, something weird like that, a, a, some more nature-based kind of thing. Helps you to, helps a, a dying plant to, to come back to life. Uh, they have the awakened uh, spells to, if you plant a pot of flowers and you can kind of awaken it so they can kind of move and breathe and be like little pets, so to speak. But uh, nothing like outrageously like a plus three sword or anything like that is going to be in the central marketplace. I mean, though, for conversations with some of the shop folk, I mean, there's obviously people within the city itself that own such magical items. But they got yeah. those through either adventuring or some special deals from out of town. But there's not really a shop per se that deals strictly in those high dollar type of uh, magical items. Okay. But they will point, they will direct you or point over towards uh, this one large building you see over here. It stands about, I think it's three or four stories tall over here. It's called the, uh, the maze arms over here. And they'll basically tell you that's like the main shopping center. There's a, uh, oh, I guess I was clicking, but I was clicking on the wrong layer over here. The maze arms. And within, okay. that, within that facility itself, let me pull it up here, there's uh, weavers and tailors, there's an infirmary and healers there, there's a general meeting hall on the main floor, there's an herbalist garden on the roof, 
Uh, I got painters and potters on one floor, cobblers and leatherworking, and glass blowers and alchemy labs on some of the subfloors. So that's the majority of where the, I guess, shop work type of um, shops are. Okay. And what else were you looking for? You said something about armorers too, or not? No, sorry, I was saying I was looking more for magical items as opposed to ah, okay. like your regular wares or something like an armor smith or a uh, weapon shop. Okay. Twig is looking for root vegetables um, and, st- and tubers and stuff to make a stew with. Yeah, you, you, I mean, the central market is like a, it's a smorgasbord of all kinds of roots and vegetables, and you can make a stew to your heart's content with all the ingredients here. Yeah, so like him and, and, and Buttercup are going down there, and like he'll sm- he'll smell, you know, stick it out of Buttercup, and she'll smell it. <laughs> and he starts buying stuff. <laughs> and for the most part, most of this this vegetable goods, I guess, it's it's pretty dirt cheap. I mean, there's always going to be a, a shopkeeper here or there that'll give you like one as a sample just to try it out because it's it's something maybe odd or something you haven't had before. But uh, they're real right. generous with with their portions and everything, so you can probably get I don't know how much you want to get for like a. Two or three meals worth? Are you talking like a week's worth? What are you What are you hoping to get? Well, enough to make dinner for Buttercup mainly. <laughs> oh well, you can make uh, you can buy plenty of uh, food and everything else for you and Buttercup for no more than like four copper. Okay. So don't even bother taking it off your off your uh, off your character sheet. It's it's okay. pretty cheap. Yeah. So so I mean, he's buying buying you know food for Buttercup. And he's like he's got like a sack tied tied to one of the pegs on her on her armor. <laughs> just keep they just keep dropping more. Vegetables and stuff. Yeah, again, you can fill it all up because they're, 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 they're happy to help, and they seem like uh, almost uh, entertained, maybe not the right word, but of seeing the, the little uh, little gnome and his pet bear, and several of them seem to have a, that affinity to the animals, and they'll reach out and ask with your permission and you know, kind of scratch her behind the ears or pat her down. Or oh, yeah, she likes them, all that. A couple of them even want to, like, say, can we wrestle with the bear, you know? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> A lot of kids running up, same thing, like looking at the bear and looking at you first. And can I pet her, miss, mister? Can I pet? He always lets him because she enjoys the attention. As, as, as one kid goes up, then there's like two and then three. And then like before you know, there's like a dozen kids that are kind of crawling all over her and hanging off of her, co- holding under her tail and just covered her like laughing and giggling and playing all over her. Yeah, they're, they're, cool. they're both cool with that. Okay. Anything else you're looking for, Twig? No, I'd say just looking for mainly dinner for Buttercup. Okay. So, Sylvia, was there someplace else you're going to head to next? Or are you still kind of just perusing the marketplace there with Twig and the Buttercup? Um. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what I was uh, mostly looking for. Is there a uh, a place of gambling in uh, Yeshomar? Uh, as you ask around, most of the uh, the patrons say that uh, gambling is not really one of the strong markets within the town, but the mixtet over here, that's basically, you learn, is the, the college of the bards, and there will be all kinds of uh, side bets and maybe some small rooms set up as makeshift gambling dens over there, but mm. not a whole lot of choices, but uh, and a couple of them will say something online, so that's what the bards do. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I guess I kind of want to figure out if the people of Yeshelmar are really that uh, intolerant. So I guess I'll. Well, give me give me an insight as you're walking around the marketplace. Kind of hard to read. I mean, you watch as, like, you know, Twig and Buttercup are kind of just playing with some of the kids, and even some of the adults are kind of playing around with Buttercup. I mean, from that standpoint, it looks like they're obviously friendly with with the bear, but, um, I mean, your interaction with them, you're not really picking up anything. Hmm. 
Um, then yeah, I'm kind of just happy perusing around the market, looking at the areas. I don't really have any objectives here other than maybe asking around about the uh, tree of uh, life. Not tree of life, but how we had that heart sort of um, we're looking into getting a soul back to um, the Sylvanus for healing of that blue uh, blue disease. For Usul? The blue disease? I'm drawing a blank. What do you mean by that? I remember when we sort of brought him back from the tree. You talking about Quarren or, or Usul? Oh, maybe maybe it was Quarren then. The one Quarren who like. Was... Yeah, Quarren. Sorry, I mixed it up. Yeah, Quarren had like the blue uh, veins. That uh, yes, he, he uh, started. You guys started seeing that after you guys came back from Immortal Caverns, and he came through the tree. That's what you're referring to. Yes, that's okay. what I'm referring to. Okay, so are you? Because I don't think we ever like actually solve solved it. Right. So you're kind of asking. So phrase to me how you're going about asking this question of some of the patrons within the marketplace. Um, I guess it's kind of like, wow, you guys are obviously really connected to like. Sylvanus and nature and have you ever heard of like you know someone's veins turning uh and I like I describe the hue and colors blue mm -hmm. maybe uh and maybe you know I'm not asking everyday people but people who might be I guess more magically inclined in the shop maybe some of the magic shops or the apothecary okay so if I'm clear, are you asking this in the central marketplace, or are you heading to that uh, that uh, the Ma the Ma's Arms? I was talking about it was more of like the uh, that's the alchemy and the glass blowers and the healers stuff like that. Were you were you asking these questions? Uh, I'd go to the Ma I'd go to the Ma's. Okay. Now are you gonna go there by yourself? You're gonna try to talk Twig into going there? I mean, if Twig wants to go, he can join me. Okay. But I don't know how long it's gonna take him to make this stew for uh, a bear. <laughs> Which I personally think is ridiculous. <laughs> well, the stew's um, for as someone, as someone who's grown up on a farm, stew for a bear. That's uh, the, the, the stew's for twig. The, I thought the, you said it was for buttercup. Well, yeah, the stew's for twig. The 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 stuff he doesn't use, he'll give to buttercup. Oh, sorry. I thought you're making it purely for buttercup. No. <laughs> Anyways, I still think it's ridiculous that you're feeding a bear vegetable soup. But anyways, but that's my thoughts. And I, I would say that I think these people would understand that animals just eat other animals and meat. Actually, bears eat quite a few roots and vegetables and spend a lot of time digging. That's why their their forepaws are so, so strong. Points out Twig. Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess. I thought that was for climbing trees and chasing down birds, but could be right. All right, so if you're trust me, if you've ever seen a bear dig, you'll know it. <laughs> All right, so if you guys are heading over to the uh, the the Ma's Arms, the kind of the shopping center, for lack of a better term, I'll come back to you guys in here in one second. We'll pick up on, on that area. Uh, next yeah. up is Tolman is back with those guys. Professor P. Yeah, man. What were you doing again? Remind me. Sorry. I'm um, just seeing if, if they have any, I, I mean, it doesn't sound like, uh, I, I think my better shot would have been in Mucklestones, but, um, just, just wondering if there's any, uh, kind of library or, or a place of lore where I could see if they have any information on limbo and the effects of, uh, the planet chaos on constructs. Okay. So as you start asking around, Just to see if there's something like maybe I can augment, you know, okay. Is this, to, or out. is this something you're asking of the, the inner council inner circle before you leave? Or is it something you're going to kind of mosey around, you know, around town and ask random people? Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely ask the people who seem to be in charge. Cause if anybody were to know, they'd probably be able to at least point me in the right direction. Okay. All right, so that would have been right at the conclusion of the little meeting with the council. I'm assuming you would have approached one of those guys as they were walking out as well. And as you kind of explain what you're looking for as far as 
something on the the history or lore of Limbo is what I heard one of them, correct? And then the other thing was about whether or not how the physics is, of Limbo, right? In yeah. particular, right? So how is how is Baymax best you gonna get around within Limbo, right? Yep. Okay. So at at that, uh, who would that be? I probably end up being actually the old guy, uh, Gorand. As you recall, Rune was one that she was going to send Gorand to go contact Jodel. And he'll be the first one to kind of chime in with you and says, Oh, you're uh, trying to figure out if you can bring your construct to Limbo, I hear, right? That's, uh, that's a new one. I can't say I've ever heard of one in Limbo, but I think it might work, I'll tell you. Cause, uh, and he starts to explain to you the logic or the physics of how gravity works within Limbo. And... He goes on and on about it. He's, he's, he's very similar, maybe, and maybe not quite as um, outlandish as Dr. P, but very common in how he just loves talking about all this detail. And uh, he'll go on and on about how he read or how he knows people or how, you know, all kinds of different ways of saying that he doesn't know for sure, but this is what he thinks, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So he says, so, so in limbo... So everything is just relative, you know what I mean? So if I'm walking along here on the floor, that's my gravity. If I see that wall over there, I'm going to walk up the wall. I walk over to it. That's my gravity. I cannot walk on the wall. I go up to the ceiling. I want to walk on the ceiling. That's now my gravity. I, I point to the ceiling and I can walk on the ceiling. That's how it works in limbo. You just you just tell it what you want it to do, and that's that's your gravity. That's how it works. So it, if you can just... If you, well, your construct doesn't it doesn't have a brain, does it? No, no, definitely no brain. I, I didn't think so. I, that's 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 what I thought. I was just testing you. <laughs> I was just testing you to see if you really knew what you were talking about. So so here's what I thought. If you if you just walk around and you got your 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 construct you know thing there with you, as long as you're the one saying this is the gravity, this is how it's going to go, then that's what your construct will. Will think as well. Now, what I what I don't know, but I, I, I probably do know this. But uh, let's put it this way: so you're walking along, gravity's here on the floor here, and your buddy over there is on the wall. If if, if your construct goes into his relative gravity, then the construct will probably take on his gravity on that wall. If that makes sense. So you just got to be careful with him. As long as he's on on your your area of control. Then he's gonna he's gonna follow your gravity, but he goes somewhere else. Someone else might may take over that that relative gravity. That makes sense to you? Yeah, that makes good sense. I also have another plan too. I was gonna run by you. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear. It. I love plans. I love hearing plans. I uh, I need to get some rope and tie it to Sir Dittemeyer and attach it to my construct. Oh. Ah. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. How am I supposed to help you with that? Oh, no, no, I just need to know where the rope store is, but I like your plan first. I'll try that when I'm there, but as a fallback, I think the rope will be fine, too. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's your call. I mean, I, I've never, I've never, you know, seen the people that use the, the, the rope meth methodology, but I guess that could work, too, but, hey, hey, hey uh, the rope, yeah, uh, you, uh, there's so much rope around here. Uh, supply stacks, or go down, probably just the central marketplace. I'm sure someone down there's got a rope they don't need anymore. I don't really know of a rope store most folks just kind of make their own or I, I don't know where they get ropes from i never bought a rope but yeah try the central marketplace that's what i would suggest thank you for your knowledge on the, the physics of limbo and uh the partial knowledge on where to buy rope <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't find one just i i, I know i've got some up in my, up in my store store house and he points up in the sky at this uh tower way on top of the mountain over here so that's my office. That's that's where I gotta go next. I gotta go, you know. You heard Runa. I gotta go call Jodell and tell him what's up and tell him to get here and or what happened to his friends or whatever. But I'll I'll be up there. So uh, if you need something, that's where I'll be. All right. So uh, Professor P would would assuming all this happened kind of before uh, we left the conversation, I would probably stick with Twig in uh, in Sylvia. Okay. And right. just uh, when we're in, when we're looking around doing shops and things like that, um, he would he would uh, hopefully find a place that that he could just purchase like fifty feet of rope or something to to tie, 
tied to one of our front liners just to drag Baymax around just in case, but he'll, he'll definitely <laughs> heed the, the, you know, he'll try out the gravity thing, but uh, as a fallback, I think having him at least secured to someone or something would work, but a little gnome might not be strong enough to <laughs> okay. Okay. pull over. All right. So if you go to the marketplace, I mean, it's mainly food. So you have to go kind of like on the outskirts of the marketplace along the edges and you'll find a couple, you know, like farm supply shops or something like that. And they got holes and rakes and stuff like that. And you, you, you can find several shops that have uh, plenty of rope. You can buy one. Don't bother marking any, any money off of your, your character sheet. It's going to be inconsequential. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And you're going to continue to follow them over to the, uh, the, the Ma's arm shopping place as well. Yeah. Professor Peel just stick with the, uh, with Twig. Okay. All right. Did I miss anybody else in inside? Yes, I'm <laughs> Holy crap! What the hell was that? <laughs> was that Buttercup? Sorry, that was my one dog policing the other dog. <laughs> Someone uh, pulled on the wrong tail for uh, Buttercup. <laughs> Oof. All she right. must be upset with eating a vegetable stew. Okay, so. Quarren's going to go off with Thosil, so you guys won't know what he's doing. I'll just share with you guys once you guys come back. What's going Sacrifice. On. Okay. All right, let me switch back to the other group. Let's see if they'll ever get to Yashomar. <laughs> back over Mucklestones. How many hours has it been? Oh, wrong map. You guys are at the actual Mucklestones, not the village. What's the big tree, dude? I'm going to fast forward a little bit. So you guys were taking a full eight hours, right? That's what you guys all told Kudwar. Seth right. is unconscious. <laughs> that was the plan, at least. Okay. So, okay, so it was like, what I say, like early mid-morning for you guys? Mm -hmm. So full hour or full eight-hour rest? I mean, it's going to be early evening, five, six o'clock-ish. And uh, Kudwar will go over and wake up Toman first, Toman and Rufus. And then he'll wake up Usul next. And then he'll kind of cautiously walk up to Silith and kind of nudge him a little bit. It's okay. It's been long enough. We need to do something for Brevin. He's not back. But, uh, how, well, all right. You're full rest then? Yeah, full rest. Eight hours. No more exhaustion. Okay. Full hit dice back. Temporary hit points gone. Hit points return. I feel energized. <laughs> oh, real quick, before I do that, so the other fo in the other group, because this is about five six o'clock at night. The other group, when you were walking through the uh, um, the marketplace, it was like mid morning there as well. So by the time you went through the marketplace, are heading towards the the uh, shopping center. And the same thing if you did is you made your way towards the uh, temple. It had been close to Probably more around noon at that point. And again, you guys still haven't taken a long rest. So I need everybody back in Yeshamar to give me another con save because it's been another four hours. Sorry, their long rest is what triggered that. Make sure I ask you guys that again. Didn't we have a rest when we were waiting for the lady? You had a short rest. You still, uh. haven't, had, you still haven't had a long rest. Remember, we got interrupted. Right. Okay. So, Diddy, you there? I'm sorry, buddy. I'll just do the roll. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, let me bring up the sheet. There we go. So just con. There we go. Woo! Just barely. All right, no, no more exhaustion. No one, no one's, uh, everyone's still been able to avoid that. But you guys are feeling it. I mean, your, your eyes are kind of droopy, and you can feel it in your muscles and your legs and everything. It's been a long time since you guys had a rest. Okay. Um, I thought we were to, the originally the idea was to take a short rest when they got dropped off in the um, in the room with the after the guards had left that room after we took. You did. You started laying down. You took a short rest, but you didn't get a long rest. Ah, uh, okay. He came was, in and yeah. woke you guys up before you guys got a long rest in. Yeah, no, no, I recall. Yep. Okay. And Corn saved as well. I wrote a 19 for him. Okay. <laughs> okay. You 
guys are screwing with my plans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so technically in Yashamar, it's still what I said around noon. Back here, it's going to be six o'clock. So sorry, guys, we're going back to Yashamar since you guys are taking a long rest. Like I expect you guys on the same time frame. Back in Yashamar. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I got to get you guys at the same time frame, so I'm not screwing myself up. All right, so Diddy, you're going to which yep. temple? Uh, so I will go to the one of Eldeth. So that is going to be... Uh, oh, I think it's uh, the Temple of... Eldeth, Eldeth. Uh, to that's going to be the Temple of Tars. And then, who are you oh. trying to go to? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, so Diddy, Diddy will go to the Temple of Tars. And as you're and he'll walking say, along and you go up to the front counter and you say that, like, no, it's tears. It's not tears, tars, yeah, it's he's, tears. So, he's, so, he's so tired. He sort of looks at them and goes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he'll sort of kneel down and pray. And then he sort of looks at it and goes, oh, that looks like a nice pillow. <laughs> and um, he'll, he'll sort of, like, take out his little bedroll and just go clunk. <laughs> Oh, you went there just to take a nap? Is that what you went there for? <laughs> yeah, I'll look for I'll look for like um, I'll ask them if they've got a room where I could, um, you know, meditate deeply. <laughs> That's what I'll call it, and um, and and tell them, you know, if my friends come looking for me, tell them that I'm there, but I'm asleep. So I'll look for the shadow of one of the gods, probably Eldath, and ask if I can sleep there. And if they say yes, I'll I'll crash. Okay, so as you After come in, you're, you're declaring that you're a follower of Eldath, right? Uh, I do. Okay, so they're going to ask... I don't think there's a little thing. They're going to ask you a few questions about Eldath to verify okay. you really are a follower <laughs> of Eldath. He, he so, slumps, okay. <laughs> so since he is your god, and you didn't fail the, the, the con save, you're still, you can still get an advantage. So give me a religion check with advantage. Okay, I'll say... I was like, she's nice, and, you know, <laughs> that's her over there on that wall. Oh, no, that's one of the priests. No, that one there. <laughs> and just so we're clear, you're, you're okay. not lying. You're, you're being serious. You, Eldath is one of the gods. Yeah, no, I've got, okay, I've got dual right. gods because I'm a, a yeah, the um, ardent light bringer, so I have to have two because I do two oaths. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. Religion, religion coming up. Uh, oh, God, I'm not that good at it. All right, here we go with a minus one. <laughs> I was always asleep in those classes. That's why I go to sleep any time I find it. <laughs> Instantly puts me to bed. Mm. Eleven. Uh, and a... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that that one, I think that one. Yeah, that one's all. Okay, so they start asking you some questions. Okay, give me some, you know, other common names of Ildath, and you kind of stumble through some of them. You get one right, and one you think yeah, is sort of kind of right, <laughs> and. <laughs> one that you just guess at. She's like, "Are you are you a novice uh, follower?" I'll, I'll point to I'll point to my shield and say, "More more active more active defense of the faith rather than practice." I think. <laughs> so, you know, I'll show them how beat up the armor is. Uh, I um I took a few hits to the head <laughs> sometimes too. <laughs> All in defense of the lady, of course. Um. But he's, you know, obviously he's super tired now. So he sort of says, if, if you let me sleep and I wake up, I will answer all your questions for you. And she kind of looks at, well, this, this is not necessarily an end. I mean, we can, oh, I'm... we can, uh, give, me a, give me a persuasion check. I said, I just want to sleep in the, in the shadow of, of my goddess because it might be the last time I get the chance. Yep. Give me a persuasion. Oh shit! <laughs> she's like, she kind of looks at with pity on you. Says, "Oh, this guy's about to pass out right here." So, here, let me, let me, let me get you a spot. Come up, follow me, and she leads you back into a a, a small study that's back in the back, got a few rooms, and there's like a there's like a somewhat of a, a lounger chair, not really a couch. Because here, just just sit here, and I'll I'll go get you some tea. And she walks out the room, and I'm assuming you're going to pass out at that point, right? <laughs> I'm going to pass out before she gets back. I'll look around, I'll see the little goddess, or, or, you know, probably statue or icon there, and I'll go, you can understand. <laughs> Plunk. <laughs> I'll take off my helmet as well, and I'll, I'll sort of uh, take off my armor as best I can, sort of lay it there and just crash out on my bedroll. All right. 
<laughs> so it's your intention to take a long rest, right? As long as you don't get interrupted? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you picked a good spot not to get interrupted, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so the other three, um, Sylvia, Twig, and Professor P, all making your way over to the Mars... Uh, hell, now I'm even saying it wrong. How's it said, Brian? Pronounced? Uh, nope, that's the wrong place. Oh, yeah, Sylvia's on top of it. It is pronounced Maze. Maze Arms. Large complex consisting of several stories as you guys walk up to it. Again, the very top story you can see has uh, all kinds of various lattice work going uh, vertical with all kinds of vines and plants growing on top of it. And above the roof, you can see what looks like it's almost like it's glass lattice work all across the top. It lets, it lets sunlight in, but you can see there's some kind of something kind of distorting the sky as you look up through it. But it looks like glass. Uh, again, three stories up. Uh, you walk up to the, the main hallway, and it's, it's basically big, big open. There's not really any kind of doors. It's like just some pillars and a big open area, all kinds of tables. You can see various people kind of walking around. Uh, it's like, almost like a garden uh, underneath, inside the building, outside of it. Uh, a couple little uh, fountains, uh, water flowing through these little bitty, um, almost like a sidewalk of water. And some kids are over playing around, but... Uh, the main hall you come up to is basically a bunch of uh, tables and chairs with stairs leading up both sides and stairs leading down both sides as well. Several people walk up to you guys greeting you. Uh, it's a couple, you know, shop, not shop, but we call them street vendors trying to sell you some more fruits or vegetables or some shoes or something, you know, something petty, so to speak. But friendly enough, just, but each one of them trying to sell you something. What are you guys looking for? What, what can I do for you? We're with him. Points to someone down the street. <laughs> this is random. Oh, is, is, he, is he the one with the money? Yep. You want the decisions? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. And he walks down and starts harassing some, some older dude. He's like slapping him to tell him to get away. But you guys will also see it deeper inside next to the stairs. You guys see there's a couple signs. Can't quite make him out from here, but... It's like there's a couple of signs uh, next to each stair. I, I can't read Elvin, so it's just a lot of the gook to me. So. Yep, I was going to say that, but yeah. from, from this, If you're close enough, you can tell it, it is all in Elvish. Sylvia, Professor Pete, you guys there? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll gladly read the sign. Okay, and as you walk up to each sign, you'll see the one has an like arrow pointing up. One is an arrow pointing down, and the one pointing up says in Elvish, first floor, that's where you are now, the general meeting hall. Second floor, mm -hmm. weavers and tailors. Third floor, infirmary and healers. And the roof is the uh, herbalist garden. Uh, I will go to the uh, infirmary and healers. Okay. Are you going to read the sign that was pointing downwards? Uh. Sure, I'll read the sign that points okay. downwards. All right, you need me to put this in the chat, or you guys get with me just saying it? You're fine. Okay. No, I'm fine with saying it. You can say it. All right, subfloor one, painters and potters. Subfloor two, cobblers and leatherworking. Subfloor three, glass blowers and alchemy labs. Mm. Okay. So I'm personally, and I turn to them, Looking to go to the healers because I think they might have some idea about uh, about this plate that's affecting uh, quarrying. Doctor P is thinking that his brain needs to arrest him. I'm assuming that you guys were still kind of walking with some kind of acolyte or something kind of showing you guys around. Is that correct? Would you have kind of told him to go his own way once you got to the central no. marketplace? No, he can accompany us. I mean, okay. maybe okay. he knows. I'm like, is there anyone who's really re well respected here as a healer? Because I'm not necessarily looking for a foot fungus. I'm looking for something a bit more than that. Uh, let me 
kind of shares it. Well, that the healers here are, are known for helping all kinds of ailments, but what you speak of is something that I'm not sure anybody here has ever heard of before. Perhaps the the inner circle of Leth would be better suited for your questions regarding that. Hmm. But we can try if you want. Yeah, I, w I, w I would like to do that. But is there uh, someone who's particularly famous in this uh, in this region? Uh, famous for interpreting blue veins? I'm sorry, I don't well, understand who, the question. Well, who might know? Maybe someone who has a a good knowledge of things that aren't. Uh, how do I say? Uh, beyond just the typical healing required for broken bones and, you know, what like is trying to remove someone's. If that's what it takes, could be. Like, I've just been listening for a little while now. I'm just like, what are you trying to accomplish? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what the, 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 the acolyte, the walkman is kind of doing the same thing. So, so, okay, so the folks on the second floor or the, the third floor here are just they're just your common healers they're gonna you have a you have a scrape you have a cut you have a you know broken bone they can probably heal you with that you come down with a, a fever they can they probably have between them and the herbalist garden on the roof they can come with something that will help you what you're asking for is something probably beyond what what they can help you with and i, and I say again it, it's probably something more better suited for the the inner circle of uh, the the high druids, uh, they they've they've been studying all sorts of things in in that regards that uh, they probably better suited for for that type of a uh, question. I'm sorry, sir, ma'am. <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, well, I guess maybe I could use some healing potions. I guess the apothecary shops downstairs. Yes, there's a alchemy lab down the uh, third subfloor. Uh, I believe healing potions is one of their common wares. Would like me to show All you? Right, I'll... Yeah, please. All right, and he'll lead you over to one of the stairs to head down the the, uh, the subfloor. Is a uh, twig and Professor Rand following, or? No, I think they're going to try to find some place to take a nap. Yeah. And as you guys recall, and the Acolyte will share with you guys again as well, if you share that, he says, oh, the Runu has uh, set up you guys with rooms at the, the Murr's Inn. Correct? That's what's what she, she informed me. Did she not inform you guys of that? Yeah, but where's that at? Oh, he'll kind of step back out from underneath the uh, the main floor there, and he'll point kind of, yeah, where Dr. P is. <laughs> Over here. And from your standing point, you can see there's a large bridge that kind of goes from over where you were, the center marketplace, that leads right into the center of this, uh, the Murr's Inn that he's pointing at. And beyond the Murr's Inn, you can see the waterfall. Beyond here, it's got all kinds of balconies and stuff along the outside of this Murr's Inn, so looks like some really nice views from within the actual, I guess, hotel or hostel, whatever you want to call it. Come on, P. All right, so you two... Right behind you! All right, Sylvia, so you... The Acolyte's going to be confused now, so... S Sylvia, is it... Do you want me to escort you, or shall I escort your friends to the, the Murr's Inn? Or I can... We can find the inn. Take care of Sylvia. And he'll kind of point you guys back towards... There is a, uh, a way to walk along the cliff path here, or towards the Murr's Inn, but uh, as soon as you two are gnomes, he tries to somehow politely say that you're not as nimble as the, the folk that are used to this. And you guys will see there's a couple elven kids that are kind of bouncing around. And the walkway is like maybe two, three feet wide with no railing. And it's like a straight shot right down into the, the water and the cliff below. That Cliff elves... looks down, whistles, <laughs> looks at one of the kids and says, come here, come here. A couple of kids kind of bouncing around off the edge or we'll, we'll kind of Somewhat cautiously, look at you. Give me a persuasion Wait, check. They can if they so desire. Hey, Diddy. Mutation. Hey, Diddy. Oh, oh he's breaking everything. Mutation. His wife just shut up. Can I mute him? 
Uh, yep. Yes. Okay, I just did. Okay. All right, so, so okay, then. Yeah, one of them kind of looks at you somewhat nervously a little bit, looks at his friend, which for some time. So you see a little boy and a little girl kind of come over. It looks like you're not sure how old they are. They're elves. They all look young, but yeah. uh, a younger elf, a, a male and female, kind of run over to you, and they say something to you in elvish. Do you speak elvish? Nope. <laughs> okay. So there's gibberish. Point, Dr. P, do you speak uh, elvish? No. Okay. And since the so, uh, <laughs> so twig, twig, twig is mirrors in. You see them kind of look at you, tilt their head a little bit. It's mirrors in. Blah, 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 and says something else. <laughs> and they point back over towards the uh, the mirrors in. Ah, thank you. And he hands them a copper each. Ah, they kind of look somewhat surprised at the copper, and you see them both look at each other with the copper, and then they. Flick it out of their hand, and it drops down into the pool below. Good use for a copper. <laughs> Come on, P, it's this way. So are you walking along that narrow yep. cliff path? Yep. With Buttercup? Yep. Okay, I wasn't too worried about you and Dr. P, but Buttercup's going to be a different story. <laughs> so go ahead and give me a acrobatics check. With advantage, since you're gnomes, a straight-up acrobatics for um, Buttercup. Unless you're doing something One else second. to prevent her from falling. And just so we're clear, it's like a, a good 60, 80 feet drop. Oh, there you go. There's there's twigs. Okay. Good thing it's at advantage, huh? Yep. <laughs> And I'll have an acrobat set up your decks. Oh, very nice. So you had no you had no qualms whatsoever about Buttercup scaling that. So it is a tight fit. Yep. You kind of kind of like stop every once in a while. Some more kids are playing along the cliffs, and they'll hop up the one above them or hop the one below them, kind of real easily. But you make your way over to the to the Mers Inn. And as you approach the Merzan, you can see already this is some very fine uh, woodwork on the stairs, the railing, everything leading up to it. Just a very, very nice, very loud. We've got tapestries all over the edges of it, kind of flapping in the wind uh, as you guys walk up to the, the front door. And there's a, uh, an elven lady standing out front, uh, older lady, uh, got gray hair, kind of all uh, matted up into a somewhat of a bun, but a few you know, strands coming out there. Just evening, evening, my fine young, my fine young gentleman. Can I, can I offer you a room this evening? Twig bows low and says, "Lord Ray Falcor's in. I believe arrangements have been made for us already." Oh, you're those folks. Yes. Uh, word was sent from Arunu. So, so nice to have you in our in our premises here tonight. And uh, says, uh, "This, my companion is Doctor P. Prof- Doctor P. Yes." <laughs> Doctor Doctor P, very very nice to meet you, my my good sir. And you have a a friend with you, I see. And she points over at uh, Buttercup. Ah, yes, that's Buttercup. She's my companion. Uh, yeah. Well, we can we can make special accommodations for for your, your pet as well. Will you be staying with you? Yes. Ah, yes. That's that's uh, yes. We can we can accommodate that. Yes, sir. We can, we can do anything you like. So right this way, and she kind of leads you up up into the uh, the front hallway. Stops off the front desk and she reaches behind the counter over it a little bit. Pulls out a, a couple of uh, key rings. Pops a couple of them off. So here, here's, here's a key for each of you guys. I'll I'll show you to your room. Uh, will the, I'm assuming the bear be staying with you? My, yes. My, okay. Okay. Very very good, sir. And she'll much leave. much the the beds are much more warmer with her. Yeah, I can imagine so. Yes, I've uh, I've missed those days, but yes, I I I know where you're coming from. And she'll lead you on the main floor. And she goes, do you prefer, I already gave you the key, it's 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 a back room, I'm assuming you wanted something a little more private, or were you wanting one with the uh, the balcony view? It doesn't matter, I'm going to sleep in it, not not observe it. Okay, very good, sir. And she'll ask the same question to you, Professor P. Uh, just a normal room is fine for me. Okay, and she'll lead you back down the hallway, past about a dozen doors on each side. Uh, each, each hallway is kind of lit with, there's lanterns? But it's not like a candle. 
there's some obviously some kind of magical source that's uh, kind of got the lights lit up on the hallways. And she leads you guys to two pretty pretty modestly um, uh, adorned rooms. Got some very nice plush uh, furniture in it, tapestries on the wall, very nice carpets, carpeted uh, floor made out of. You're not sure what it is. It's not fur. But it, it's strange. It's almost like you're you're walking on like somebody's bushy jacket or something. Is it bear? You're not there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just very nice out of character. Thank you. <laughs> very nice, thank you. All right, and she says if there's anything else you need, and she kind of points over next to the door. There's like a little uh, lever. Just just give the lever a pull, and uh, someone will come to, uh, to come to your aid. Anything uh, else just, you can. Uh, a simple small uh, small dinner for myself, and I'm sure my companion would like one as well. Not not the bed, or Doctor P. Yes, of course. Sir. If, if uh, is it Chef's Choice, or do you have something in preference? A oh, Chef's Choice is wonderful. I was just really thinking some, possibly some bread and cheeses, something along that line. Ah, yes, very well, sir. So we can we can we can arrange that for you. And the same for you, Doctor P. That sounds delicious. Oh, and uh, a wine of some kind to go with it, please. Oh yes. Nothing got... fancy, just something. Some have the chef pick something to compliment the items you send up. I'm sure we'll send in send the house special, sir. You, you should enjoy that. Excellent. Quite well. At that, she bids you adieu, and she closes the door behind you, and you guys are free to either have a conversation or hit the sack. What do you guys do? By the time that the wine and the, the food arrives, Twig and Buttercup are sound asleep. Okay. And did he fall asleep in the? Temple, and then Sylvia was heading down to the alchemy shop, correct? Correct. Okay. All right, so you go down three sets of stairs. Uh, again, you're kind of passing up, mostly elves. Occasionally you see a, uh, a a halfling pop up, either a halfling or maybe a small human, you're not sure. Uh, but again, it's mainly mainly elves back and forth. Make it down to the, the third floor down here, and off to the left... You can see there's a kind of a big open area, but you can see and smell the uh, the equipment down here for the glass blowers. So you several them with some kind of weird looking goggles on it and the little flames of torches and big piles of glass. And it's almost like you're in a mine. You can hear the crunching of glass and you can hear the, the torches of something burning. And off on the right, you can see behind uh, some more, more of this kind of glass lattice work, so to speak. Uh, but it, it's almost like the glass is not, it's not brittle. It's almost like the glass is like wavy. It's weird. You've never seen something like this before. But behind that, you can see there's all kinds of uh, little uh, giant tables of these beakers and all different kinds of alchemist tools and everything for all kinds of stuff. And along the long right side of the room is nothing, it's just shelves after shelves of all different kinds of potion flasks throughout. And as you kind of, I'm assuming that's where you're heading, correct? Yeah. Okay. And as you walk through to the right, over to the alchemy side over here, you see one uh, particular elf kind of walk up to you, uh, kind of ping on her on the map here. Off to the right. I'll uh, just bring her to the map, but I'll do that instead. This lady right here. I'll bring her over here to you guys as soon as I click on the right freaking layer. Okay. Got too much stuff open. Younger, a younger, youngish, maybe middle age. It's kind of hard to tell with elves, as you probably know. Kind of comes uh, walking up to meet you as you come into the front door. And says, says, welcome, man, welcome, man, to the alchemy shops here, here in uh, Yeshimar. I don't think we've seen you here before. Uh, may I ask your name? Uh, my name's Sylvia. Sylvia, Sylvia, so nice to meet you. My name is uh Finn Rayan, and what what can we do for you today? Well, you know, I was I was wondering if you had any. What kind of potions do you have here? So oh, we've got uh, pretty much anything that ails you. Uh, just just tell us what you're looking for, and that's probably be quicker than me trying to tell you all that we have. Hmm. Well, what kind of uh? What kind of, uh, do you have healing potions? Of course, of course we have healing potions. Yes, we, we, uh, we supply the infirmary up on the uh, upper floors over here with uh, most of their needs, but we also uh, do sell to the, uh, uh, the town folk here as well. 
So is, uh, what were you looking for? Some of the more average variety, or you need something a little more kick? Well, uh, how much is an average uh, healing potion? And she kind of looks over, and, and, and I, I apologize for this. I don't mean to be rude, but are, are, where, where are you from, Sylvia? Oh, I, I come from a really small town, sort of um, uh, a little ways away from here. I've just sort of been on this adventure with my compatriots who have left to retire for the night, so I'm just trying to uh, restock my supplies a bit. And as you, as you say about, you know, I'm here with your, your friends, her eyes kind of get big. Cause, oh, are you, are you of the party from Mucklestones that just arrived? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm one of them. Oh, very well then. And she kind of holds out her hand, and she kind of shakes your hand. Very nice to meet you. I had, I had no idea that uh, that that you were you were one of them. So please please come in and let, I was going to talk to you, but we give discounts to the town folk here. But visitors, we we tend to put a little upcharge. We you know we've got to make some money somewhere. But you you don't worry about that. We we know what you're what you're about to do here. So come on in, come on in, come on in. So uh, here's what I do. The regular town folk, if you want a uh, uh, just a regular run of the mill healing potion, we'll sell it to you for forty gold pieces. If you want a greater, okay. that'll be 90. If you want something stronger than that, let's talk. <laughs> and she kind of chuckles at that one. Um, Definitely that, not in Gumtar Stronghold. <laughs> and uh, what what would you say uh, is your... What's your specialty potion that you make? Specialty potion? What do you mean by that, man? Yeah. Well, like, what... Uh, What's a potion you have that sort of sets you apart from the other vendors here? Well, we're we're a community of labs here. There's not really like something I do versus she does versus he does. We all pool our resources together and for the greater good of the community. So we're not one to flaunt uh, one's accomplishments over the others. But we've uh-huh. got we've got everything from make you a little taller to make you a little greener to you know. Improve your eyesight. Uh, again, what what kind of things yeah. are you looking for? Do you have anything that would uh, maybe make it so that no one can see you? Oh, you're talking about potions of invisibility, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we. I think we still got a few of them in the back. We don't sell those very often. I mean, occasionally the hunters will come in here and use that for their hunting parties. But yeah, we've got a few of them back here. Those those are a little more difficult to make, so I, I apologize. But those are gonna run you a little bit more is i mean is that okay i mean I don't, i'm not trying to rip you off i can you can i can assure you that but those are a little more difficult to make well what 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 does one of them them go for well what what would you give to uh one of the local hunters here i guess uh, all right now you gotta pause i knew you were gonna ask me that i gotta look up at the rarity of a potion of invisibility so i can determine that Tell you what, I'm gonna wing it. It's super, it's super common and is worth like ten gold. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna say that a potion of invisibility is gonna be a uh, 250 gold, and that's probably cheap. Okay. Um. I I. Hmm. 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 I um. Well, that does sound a little compelling, but that that seems uh. Well, if I got a potion of invisibility, and how much did you say a, a greater healing potion was? Ah, well, that's that's we use those around town quite a bit. They're about ninety gold pieces. That's for the that's the in town price. Hmm. Okay. Well, I I don't quite have enough for that. Ah. Uh pretty close though i got i got 315 gold pieces on me but uh you have 315 you say uh yeah so so tell you what i'll make you a deal since i i know what you guys are here for again i'll i'll take a loss on this one i'll say invisibility potion and a greater healing potion i'm sorry invisibility and greater healing for 315 okay i think i i think i can manage that Okay, very well, ma'am. Just wait right here, and she'll walk back to the back and go behind a, a gate that's kind of keeps the, the shelving units away from the general public. And she'll kind of disappear behind one of the shelves, and hear a couple bottles rattling, and a stool may, or something maybe kind of sliding along the floor, and she comes walking back around. She's got two 
uh, potion bottles, each of them wrapped up in a small little burlap bag with uh, kind of like a ribbon tied around them. So here you go, yeah. man. This is deal of the day, 315 gold pieces. This sounds excellent. She'll hold out her hand. Thank you. And, and I take them and I say, thank you very much. She goes, no, thank you. Uh, and, and and do you have any tips for, for what we're about to <laughs> And she kind of chuckles. No, no offense, man, but I've, I, this is my home. I, I just, I work in the shops and I sell stuff. I don't, I don't travel out of Yeshamar, so I, I would not be of any good use to you with my comments or my opinions. But you haven't heard any whispers or anything? Whispers? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, people come to the market and they talk with people they know and sometimes yeah, overhear things. I, I, if you're referring to gossip, ma'am, I, I, I don't, I don't partake in that. I, oh. and we don't, we don't get a whole lot of visitors here. I, I, it's mainly the townsfolk here or those that are here studying. So most of the folks here are, are here for a while. We don't get uh, folks in and out just passing through, if, if, if that's how you say it. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, do you know where somebody might get something um unknown identified identification oh i'm sure like that, a magic uh, item? yeah i'm sure any of the uh the temples within town could uh could handle that for you or even up at the observatory El Goron, his his crew uh, they could uh yeah any, any, pick and she rattles off the temple of tears the tower of ooze the tower of tal she says the observatory and she says hell even even some of the bards at the mixtet may be able to uh, uh, do that for you as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You've been very helpful. She goes, thank you. And I, and I wish you all the best and the best of luck of uh, your your quest before you. Well, thank you. And I and I and I leave and I tell the acolyte to uh, take me to where um, where did he went. Well, he was walking with you, and Diddy was with a different acolyte. Is that correct, Diddy? You got to unmute. Oh, I got him on mute. <laughs> sure, Diddy, go ahead and talk now. Right, I think they all have those earpieces where they communicate effectively and lead us around, right? All right, I can't even unmute him now, so he must have muted himself. Mm. Diddy, are you there? Oh, he's on push, he's on push to talk. Oh, is he? I heard him. All right, Diddy, you there? He probably got in trouble with his wife, so now he's not allowed to talk. <laughs> that should be Ran, not Diddy. But... <laughs> all right, so I'm on rule. I think Diddy is with a different acolyte, and you guys, probably, right. you guys pretty have noticed that as you left as well. So if I thought he was to... unconscious. <laughs> so if you want to rewind that and, and word that a different way, that's fine. No, then uh, if that's the case, then I'll just go to the uh, inn where uh, Twig and and Doctor P went. Okay, and you're greeted pretty much the same way. This older older lady, kind of dark uh, dark skin complexion. I got my shit up with uh, with uh, with uh, Twig and Professor P or not, but dark complected, almost like a, a brown skin with gray hair. And she greets you at the front uh, the front door, same as she did before. Says, "Welcome, welcome, ma'am. I, I, what can I do for you tonight? Can I get you a room?" A room would be splendid. Um, I think two of my my uh, traveling companions were were here earlier. Uh, one gentleman with um, oh a, a big bear. <laughs> and she kind of chuckles. <laughs> yes, Mister uh, Mister Zen, right? Yes, yes. I met him earlier. Yeah. And his and his big fluffy friend. So yes, uh, you must be part of the the uh, the troop that's here and Arunu uh, set up rooms for. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, very, very well. Then I, I can I can accommodate you uh, however you like. Uh, your your friends chose the interior rooms. Uh, we also offer balcony rooms, and she kind of uh, holds one hand out as you look at the the waterfall off to uh, her right, your left, coming down. So would you prefer a room with a view or something more private? Uh, whatever whatever's your 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 simplest uh, room is is perfectly adequate. Because I don't mean to boast man but none of our rooms are simple we pride ourselves on on 
on our establishment here. But uh, th then I, I'll take the room with the view. Ah, very well, very well, ma'am. She kind of leads you inside, and just like before, she leans over the counter, reaches back, rattles around, grabs some keys, pops one off, hands it to you, and says, it's right this way, ma'am. And she actually leads you up three stories. And I, I mm. must tell you, your friends are staying on the main floor. They wanted something a little more private, I guess, but I'll lead you up to one of our, uh, our open fine rooms on the, on the third floor, if that's okay with you. Uh, I would just like to stop to let them know that I'm here. Oh, I, if you don't, I, 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 and they're your friends. I understand that, but as I understood, they were going to just have a meal and then go right to sleep. They, they looked very haggard. As, as no offense, man, but so do you. Okay, well, if you see them, if you see them in the morning or whoever's going to be working the desk, just let them know I'm here in case they, uh, they don't know. Oh, very well, ma'am. I'll have my my daughter works the evening shift. I'll let her know. Okay. She'll lead you up to the third floor and out to one of the uh, mm -hmm. the very – as soon as you walk in, you can see there's like – there's tapestry, almost like curtains over the front. There's no Ooh. wall to it, so you can kind of hear the soothing sound of the waterfall coming through. And she tells you, she goes, if you want if you want the sound gone, just, just say the word, and we'll have uh, – I'll have one of the, the boys close the uh, uh, close the gates – so that the, the sound doesn't bother you, but most of our patrons uh, enjoy the soothing sound. It's up to you, man. Oh, no, it, it, it sounds quite nice. I, I, I think I'll, I'll leave uh, the waterfall doing its thing. Ah, very, very well, ma'am. And she explained the same thing to you. There's like a little lever next to the door. It's just ring that if you need anything, and we'll, we'll have a servant come right up. Wonderful. I, I don't think I'll need anything unless you can send up some uh, just, you know, a, a small, a small plate of food. I'm a wee bit uh, hungry. Very, very well, ma'am. Uh, anything in particular, or just the chef special? The chef special is perfectly fine. Very well. I, mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend by saying this, but you know we're vegan here, right? So there'll be no meat within the, the chef special. Hope that's okay with you. Uh yes, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Okay. I that was uh, that was told to us by um, by one of our party members. Yes, yes, very, very well then. Just sometimes we get guests that don't know that that uh, we are a vegan establishment. But yes, I'll have the chef special brought up to you, maybe ten, fifteen minutes, and I'll bring you up a, I'll send you up a bottle of house uh, special wine if you'd like to. Uh, sure, if you like. Very good, very good, ma'am. Anything else I can do for you? I uh, know that is all. And she bids you adieu, locks the door, locks the uh, door behind you, and you settle down for your nap after your meal. Okay, yes. so now everybody's finally sure taking a long Daisy. rest. I'm sorry? And I make sure to feed Daisy, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Dangle her off the, the balcony like Michael Jackson did. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now finally, everyone's taking a long rest. So there's one little thing I have to go through here before everyone does a long rest. Is everybody here on Discord right now? Usul? Except Diddy. Present. Okay, Ran, you're there still? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and Silith is there. Toman, you there? Roger, Roger. And Twig, you're there? Yep, I'm okay, here. So just did him, the only one that's not here right now. Who's, who's typing? Is that you typing away there, Sylvia, on your phone? Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let me get my shit together now. Because during your next long rest, I had this like freaking plan for like a month. You guys never could take a long rest at the same time. It's driving me nuts. So, okay, here we go. This is going to be like kind of like a cut scene, guys. Um, this is something that all of you guys are going to experience it. Or I guess all of you guys are going to hear it. That's probably the better way of putting this. All of you guys are going to hear this but you don't necessarily know who this is for, if that makes sense. Okay? This is a cut scene, so bear with me for a second. This is my first time doing this one. Ooh, high tech. Yeah, not so high tech. This is low tech. This is me just explaining what's going on. Okay, let me read through a few of my notes since you guys are in different spots. Make sure that wasn't an issue. Okay, so three of you slept just in the middle of the Mucklestone Garden. The rest of you guys are either in a room or in a small library nook. Diddy, who's not here. All right, so each one of you guys, you wake up 
kind of halfway through your your nap and kind of look around your room rubbing your eyes a little bit kind of wondering why the hell you just woke up and you all notice a small sapling something kind of growing right in the middle of the floor by your feet or for those of you in muckle stones it's kind of it wasn't there before a small little sapling growing next to your feet and as you kind of you know sit up a little bit take a closer look uh, you notice has a long thin root kind of just springs forth out of the ground and it starts to kind of caress your foot nearby and before you can react it grips your foot tight for those of you in mucklestone clearing you look around and your friends that are with you are still asleep and the other folks that were there in mucklestone don't seem to be even noticing or looking your way and before you can even react and scream, more of these roots just sprout up all around you and completely cover your body. Cover your mouth, cover your chest, and you can feel them squeezing about you. Like you're almost like struggling to breathe here a little bit. Your mouths are bound, preventing any more shouts or noises to warn your friends. The roots tighten. Uh, what's everybody's con? Oh, I got it up here. Okay. You feel the roots tighten about your chest, having a struggle to breathe. It's not stopping your breathing yet, but you can feel it definitely struggling. As you're trying to fight to get your last breath, more roots sprout up from the floor or the bed or the ground next to you and completely engulf you, and your vision just goes black. You cannot see anything. Okay? And now i got to make someone a little paranoid. Usul, you still there? I'm here. All right, buddy. <laughs> I have got to move you into a private chat room for one second. Goodbye, soul. <laughs> so long. That I can play with you, dude. So we knew him well. Okay. Uh, geez. All right, Usul, can you hear me? No, you're you're still in this one. You got to move he over can there. Hear with you. Me. I know. That's where I want to be with you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let me pop in there just for a second so he's not freaking out. I'll be right back. Hi, right, Lucille. You hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, so let's go through this with you. Got to scroll. All right, so as your vision goes black with these roots going all over you, with a flash, you're released from these bindings, only to find yourself floating in some kind of ethereal plane. You see a gigantic, uh, wisty, misty, ghost-like tree that you recognize as the Egosil tree. But it's spread out over the entire night sky with roots that turn into these same wispy tendrils that kind of be flowing in the wind, if there was such a wind. Some of the tendrils kind of fade away into the night sky while others kind of trail down into the, the earth below, or the horizon below. And a bright flash just temporarily blinds you. And as your sight returns, you see a standard tree, no larger than, say, like a typical house. But this tree is not planted in the ground. It's still floating. You see small flashes of light erupt from the tips of the branches and also from the ends of the roots. Tiny creatures emerge from the ends of the branches, the roots, after each flash. Upon closer inspection, you can kind of tell that they are tiny creatures. And upon closer look, they look like slotty, as a matter of fact. Tiny little slotty coming out of these, these ends of the, the tendril, the roots, the branches of the tree. As you reach out for one of them, you realize that they're actually miles away from you. What you thought was right in front of you is actually much, much farther away. A voice echoes through your mind. The balance between good and evil has shifted, my son. My veins, they're now open. Balance must be restored for my veins to be healed. Do your part. Bring the seed, and your desires shall be fulfilled. And the tree limbs quickly, quickly begin to grow and lengthen. Your body is frozen in place as if you're still paralyzed. 
The roots engulf your body once more and your vision goes black again. And you wake up underneath what appears to be a large tree that's actually Ticknook. Okay? So you soak that up for a second. Stay here. I gotta go back into the main party and share something else with them, but I don't want you to hear it. So stay here and I'll bring you back in a second. Okay. Okay? Any questions yep. before I leave though? Nope. Okay. All right, so back up in here with these guys. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry it took so long. Not you guys. Uh... Hey, there's Grunt on the, the Discord channel. I like it. Good. All right, so you guys. This is just for you. So again, everyone hears this. This is a cutscene still. Don't really know who this is for, and that's on purpose. Okay? <laughs> so it's not for a soul. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these binding roots continue to kind of squeeze you tighter. Um, have I mean, one person and one person only to do me a con save. Who's good at Not a con it. save? Was, you know what? You know what? Uh, I, I'm the worst worst person to do a con save. Uh, uh, so we'll be right. I've got, I got a plus, plus five. <laughs> I think I've got a plus six. So I have a plus right? seven. Be smart about oh, it, guys, because once you do a con save, if I ask for another one, you can't do it. So only one con save per request? Uh, I'm going to have other requests. They may be a con save, may not. I'm just saying be smart about it, because once you do a, a save for con, you cannot do it again. Ooh. I heard a plus six and a plus seven, so one of those go, and then we <laughs> have a, a backup. <laughs> exactly. I'm a well, lonely guess, one. We don't want to use Thomas. I'm a zero, <laughs> dude. Um, I guess we'll. Uh, I guess I'll. I'll take a, a lead off here. Okay. Unless things are going to get worse later on. <laughs> we still use. Just roll the dice. You're, Sylvia. You're like that guy from Princess Bride. Unless you want me to think you poisoned the wine. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the All right. Again. Let me see here. Let me just roll it to me. Click the button. All right. We learned from Three. that that both cups are always poison. Poison. Ooh, nice. nice. All right. Again, you feel these things kind of going around your chest and start to squeeze tighter. You can feel yourself kind of struggle to breathe, but you're still able to get kind of short breaths in and out of your lungs. <laughs> you feel like your chest is about to pop, and then your vision fades in a flash. You find yourself floating high above a sparse forest grove. And floating next to you is an indiscernible figure shrouded in mist, smoke, ethereal. I'm not really sure. You can't quite make out what he is or what it is. But it points one of its long and kind of smoky appendages below you. As you look down and kind of trace where the, the finger is pointing, you can, you can kind of hear it speaking but you can't see anything any lips any face on the thing and you hear the words watch and learn as it's pointing down below now one of you guys give me a perception check <laughs> i i uh, told it <laughs> i got that one <laughs> all i can say to that is is zero a good bonus <laughs> Use right. your perception check to determine that, did he? All right, he whispered, uh, okay. he whispered it to me. He, he got a 17, but he whispered it to me. Uh, I did that. <laughs> okay. All right, so as you look below, you can see a figure, and it looks similar to Brevin. He's holding the talisman, the talisman of Talum, aloft in one hand, in front of a portal, and he's chanting something. Oh, balls. The talisman is pulsating with a vibrant white light. And along the perimeter of this grove that he's standing in, you guys can see hundreds of slotty. Brevin holds aloft his other hand, and you watch as a blast of radiant energy explodes from it up into the sky. Some of the slotty stop in their tracks, kind of shielding their eyes from this radiant energy. Others seem unaffected, and they start to rush towards Brevin. With a thunderous exclamation, Brevin finishes the chanting incantation and raises the talisman higher into the air. Brevin's other hand, still emanating that intense, radiant light, 
raises up and unleashes its power through the talisman. A blinding white explosion just erupts from the talisman in what seems to be at least a hundred foot radius. As your vision kind of whites out and comes back, you look down and now the grove is empty, except for a lone figure, what you're assuming is Brevin, bent over on his hands and knees. The portal is gone. The slotty are gone. Need another perception check. Uh, can't be Toman. Cannot be Toman. <laughs> it cannot anyone... be Diddy if you want to succeed either. <laughs> anyone be the three? <laughs> Too late. Mm. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, give me a second to think how I want to do this now. Uh... Y'all were taking too long. Okay, you notice either laughter or crying. You're not sure which it is coming from Brevin. The creature that was floating next to you is now pointing at you. And you hear the voice in your head again. Again, You see no face, you see no features of it to determine what the hell it is. But you can hear the voice in your head. It says, you are the next one to receive my gift. Use it wisely. And you, too, will succeed in balancing the scales. Tell no one, or I shall rescind my gift to you. You then begin to start rising up into the air even higher. At a very fast pace, the creature continues to point at you from below. The creature then instantly just disappears with a pop. And you begin falling. Falling faster. Falling faster. Falling faster than you don't understand why. It's like someone's pushing you through the air as you come crashing down into the earth with a big thud. And then you awake in your bed or on the ground as if nothing happened. Don't people normally, like, die when they fall in their dreams? I heard that's a thing. Any questions before I bring your stool back in? No. Okay, just one. Yep. Uh, actual, actual serious one. We were essentially all, see, like, seeing this individually, so none of us knows that the other pr- people have seen this. this. Correct? This scene is technically only seen by one of you, but I'm not telling you which one it is. This is like a cutscene. So this affects one of you, you just don't know which one. Yeah, we can't mention it because if we mention it, the gift is taken. Correct. <laughs> nice. mm. Did it look a bit like the same creature that I saw in my dream? What I explained to you is what you saw. <laughs> uh, that's, okay, yeah, right, same creature. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not saying someone's a blabbermouth in this party, but uh, who's got a good dex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it's me not to tell. All right. Any other questions before I bring the soul back in? Nope. nope. Good to go. Okay. All right. I'm sure he's out there pins and needles wondering what the hell's let's going just, on. Let's <laughs> just not discuss the giant floaty death thing in front of him. <laughs> and when he gets back, Osu, how you doing, buddy? Right, he's coming back. He's coming back now. Hey, Osu. All right, so you back? I'm back. How 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 you doing, buddy? You you feeling okay? I feel great. Good. That's 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 good to hear. Good, good, good. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right. So with that, we will jump back over to the group that's in the uh, the Mucklestone uh, pasture. Okay. Let me switch my maps back over to this again. And you folks have just woken up from a long nap. So all all your hit points are back. Get half of your hit dice back. Remember, you only get half your hit dice back after a long rest. And you'll get uh, all of your mana back as well. So I keep forgetting to use those. I I had them all. Go down to 2 HP and never use a single hit dice. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's great. All right. So as you guys awake, you see still Tick Nook still standing there over watch over the portal. And uh, Kudwar was the one waking you guys up. It's okay. It's been it's been long enough. I think it's time for us to see if Brevin's there. He 
It says, Sebastian here is ready to start casting his magic circle. And we're planning on doing this just like we did last time. We'll cast the magic circle. See if... Oh, I'll open up the portal. If the demon comes through, he can't get past the magic circle. He'll be trapped there. And then Sebastian will do his banishment. And hopefully that works. And hopefully Brevin is nearby. And he'll come through the portal. Does that make sense? Anyone agree? Disagree? So, so like, nervous to agree? Good. So, no disagreements, right? No, sir. Sounds good to me. All right. So, Sebastian steps up first. So, it's getting real jittery. And this is, again, this takes a minute for him to cast this. And, uh... He starts waving his hands in the air and starts chanting something over and over again. And he's kind of walking around in somewhat of a circle all the way around uh, this uh, this gate, these stones right here. That's the gate you guys walk through. And he does this for like the next 60 seconds, walking around and kind of occasionally going down to the ground and making some kind of a, a sigil with his finger into the grass as he's going around chanting this over and over again. And let me see if I can, I can draw a circle. That's a hold alt for circles. I can grab it and move it. Damn it, I can't move it. Well, screw it. That's where it is. <laughs> Close enough. All right, so you guys watch as this dome or this circle kind of lights up, and you see these uh, soft yellow lights kind of rise up into the, the sky, maybe about 15, 20 feet in the air. And then you watch uh, Kudwar walk up to the, uh, the actual stone within the circle and it starts to kind of trace the runes over there. He looks over at you guys. So you guys ready? We should be should be safe as long as he's inside this circle, and just let Sebastian do his thing, and we'll see how far we get with this. Anybody doing anything different? Prepping? Moving anywhere else? Silas, um, Silas, uh, sketching out a little. He does what a little? He's uh, he's sketching out. <laughs> he's his real nerve. I accidentally uh, clicked it, so that uh, to you, that's a that's a, like a preemptive. Let's take yep. it as that. Yep, I saw it. <laughs> Does that mean you're preparing that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Okay, we're not going to be any more prepared. Let's do this. All right, so let me just grab a few more of these rangers that come out of the trees. Okay. All right, so we cast all this. Shit, where'd I put him at? I think he's on. One second, I gotta grab the guy. I think I had him back on this one. Did I not? Uh, sorry, guys. I should have had this prepared. Mm -hmm. I got on which mm -hmm. freaking map I put him on. Ah, there he is. There he is, and there they are, and there's this one, and that big guy, and this big guy. Shut up, Brian. You make me nervous. <laughs> Do that. Now I'll switch back over here with you guys. Yeah, why are you creating? Yeah, why are you creating the new character sheets of talk, Drawing? <laughs> I did this in the last session because I thought for sure you guys were gonna fight him, and you guys went somewhere else. All right, so we do this and switch the layers. And you guys watch as this big hooded, horned red and gray and black demon comes bursting through and starts roaring and kind of swiping at Kudwar as he steps back from opening up the uh, the portal. Whoops, not him. Got too many people in here. So he's got to make me a deck save when he gets hit. And then Sebastian immediately starts to kind of cast his Banishment, but first things first, cut war and his deck save. Oh yeah. He steps back out of the way almost like he knew it was coming. And then Sebastian's gonna cast his banishment. Are you doing it at the same time, Silith, or are you waiting to see if his works? <laughs> uh, no, he's he'll, he'll wait. Okay. Oh crap. 
whispered it to myself, but trust me, he cast it, and it's a charisma saving throw. Is that right? It's whatever his spell save is, isn't it? Yeah, it's charisma. Minus their spell resistance. Let's make this public. Oh no, it is a, it is a Christmas saving throw. Yeah, yeah, it's Christmas saving throw versus his. Uh, oh spell. damn it! I'm so upset. But he gets more oh. than one save. What? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> he gets advantage on his saving throws. He does. But you saw how well that worked. Hold on a minute. Does he have legendary resistance? Damn it! He does not. Well, that was freaking fun. <laughs> <laughs> Pop. And he gets a third saving throw. And you guys watch as he pops out of existence as he screams. And you guys also can, uh, those of you who are, no, you can't see it. So Kudwar will kind of point in through the portal and say he sees two other dark figures in there, but they quickly disappear as well. And you guys, this portal stays open for like six seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Six seconds go by, nothing else pops through, and the portal disappears. And Cudwar's like, shit! Shit! Is that... I don't know if that means Brevin's alive, if he wasn't there, but I'm doing it again. He runs up to the portal again, he starts kind of tracing the symbols again. And this magic circle lasts for, I think, is it an hour? Is it one minute? It's an hour. Yeah, it's an hour, so it's still there as well. Cudwar goes up and retraces the, the, the markings again and steps back. And waits, and you guys eventually will see Brevin pop through there. Oh, I already got him on the screen, don't I? Well, well, there's the bad thing. Brevin pops through. Panic hands goes. What the heck? Oh, that's Rufus, not Brevin. <laughs> no wonder Brevin wasn't popping through. <laughs> Rufus gets sucked through the portal. No! No, Brevin pops through, and you can see him, he's kind of haggard a little bit. He's bleeding, and he kind of pops through. He's like, thank God. I didn't think he was ever going to leave. Uh, what, what, what? And he looks over, and he sees Soleth and Toman and Uso. Says, what? I, I. We I, saved I, you. <laughs> you. Where were you? I couldn't find you. Toman runs up and hugs him. <laughs> we're like, so what? happy you're safe. I I thought you were dead. I thought you thought I, we were dead. I thought I failed you. I I saw the the signs of some kind of a battle at the the portal, and I know it, I, they were fresh. They weren't. There were burn marks. I know that Usul was on fire, but that, that wasn't from him. I I I oh, thank the gods that you're alive. Thank the gods you got rid of that demon. Holy holy shit, guys. <sighs> okay, so where, where are the others? What's going on? Tell me, fill me in. What's going on? I don't know where the others are. I haven't seen them yet. And Cudwar, like, share with you guys again. They did come through before you guys did, and he sent them on to uh, to Yeshomar. And Brevin says, "Good, good. So they're so they're all alive then, right? All of us." At last count. Okay, good, good. That's 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 good news. Let's. <sighs> kind of sighs real heavy. He says, Cudwar, do you have, are you able to transport us again? And Cudwar kind of puts his head down and says, I, I can only cast that but once a day. And I, I did that last night at midnight for the other half of the group. So it's going to be morning before I can cast it again. Well, maybe uh, I should have asked Gallard if you had that prepared. Maybe Gallard has it prepared. We can, we can go back into town and find out. And Kudwai kind of turns up to Tick Nook and says, Tick Nook, it, it's like we're okay. We didn't need you. You can you can go back to your trees and, and rest. And Tick Nook kind of just slowly looks down at Kudwar and the rest of you guys. It says, okay. Have fun, guys. As he kind of slowly waves one hand and kind of rumbles his way back over here into the trees. So you, uh, I guess we're gonna, um, hmm. What's that? Just, did you see the thing I, uh, was gonna do? I was trying to, uh, I'll just talk to you on the channel for a second. You talking about the thing you put in, you whispered to me? Yep. 
Yeah, it's the same thing that uh, uh, Sebastian did. Yeah, who came through the gate? The demon. And then after that? Was Brevin. Uh-huh. Oh, you were casting that on Brevin? Uh-huh. But uh, if the target is native to plan of existence, you're on to banish. No way! You did uh-huh. not! You did not! Uh-huh. Why would you do that? <laughs> Panic hands McGee. I told that's why he had already prepped it before. So everything I just said about Brevin being there didn't happen. That's, that's why I want to talk to you in the other chat for a second. No, nah, let's put this out in the open. So let's... No, no, no. I, I do I do want to talk to you in the other channel for a second. All right, guys. Hold on a minute. One sec. Silas is going to get himself killed. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it only works on... Uh, on... Things from other planes, though, right? Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah, they. All right, what in the hell are you doing, man? Uh, I'm s- sketching out, so Silith is not trusting anyone anymore. <laughs> and uh, his his like he does he assumes it was Brevin that came through, but he's not sure. Yeah. So, be- the banishment it kicks off if if that's not actually Brevin, he won't come back. So let me read it here. So if the target is native to the plane of existence you're on, which you don't know if he is or not. You banish the target to a harmless demiplane. While there, the target is incapacitated. The target remains there until the spell ends, at which point the target reappears in the space it left or in the nearest line. All right, so if it really was him, he'll come back in a minute. If, if it wasn't him, he won't come back. Right. Okay. He just He's trapped in a harmless demiplane for the rest of his existence. Okay, so well, I'm going to so explain to him about what they see. And it's going to be pretty obvious that you're the one that cast it. I'll let you role play however you want to handle that. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you ready to go back? All right. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, We're back. Combat or something. All right. So you guys watch. <laughs> so I got to rewind. Brevin didn't say any of that conversation with you guys. So Sebastian... I think Brevin still gets a save though, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he does. He does. He, yeah, he does. He does. So I'll bring a guy. Let's take a rewind and do that save just in case he, he he fails on this. So Sebastian is the one that cast the first one and the demon popped out. Then as soon as Brevin popped through, Scylla freaking out, cast the exact same spell. And now Brevin has to make a freaking curse of his save. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, this is, oh, crap. I gotta make his character sheet where it's, uh, I don't know if it's a whisper to me or not. Let's find out. Nope. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he comes over and strangles Silla. <laughs> so he comes walking out and he goes, goes freak, boop, and he just disappears. <laughs> so feel free to role play that however you want, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me move t- t- so, t- back. <laughs> and then, I guess, if you guys aren't going to say anything, cover him with the first one. He's like, what? Silla, what are you doing so it's like don't worry don't worry he'll be right back he'll be right back and then he looks over at sebastian and goes yeah i i get it I, I, if, if it was brevin he'll be right back if it's not brevin he's not coming back so and he, and he looks so, over so he's gonna just stand there with his hands up like <laughs> interrogated prisoner kind of style and code just slaps himself in the forehead says, just at least at least tell us before you do something like that so it's like I didn't want to give him any warning. Oh my gosh! We could have figured out if it was him or not. Oh. Well, so it seemed like well the slotty managed to trick us, and we're pretty hard to trick. <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> so he kind of stands there for a second. He's like, and he we had the the magic circle. If it wasn't him, he no. Sebastian goes, no, no, that's that's not what I had it. It was blocking demons, not not those things. So I think those things would have come right through. So Sebastian's kind of in your corner, so let's believe it or not. But he's just kind of being quiet about it. He's like, yeah, that was. It'll be even more. It'll be more funny if he doesn't pop back. <laughs> All right, Usul Toman, anything you're saying or doing during this whole deal? I'm just. Slowly shaking my head. Same here. <sighs> Please tell me you didn't send him somewhere dangerous. No, no, no. He's fine. He's fine. He's essentially in like, like you know, 
Cotton Candy Land. It's, it's just everything you never do. He's he won't right. even notice he's there. Besides, and then okay. and so it's just like just evaluating the time. He's like he's only there for another fifteen seconds. <laughs> and Tanook starts talking. He's just scratching his head with his long barky fingers. So if I understand, <laughs> if he and then pop, Bradman comes right back. Fantastic. <laughs> so Sil so drops his arm. See, like, look, what? we're fine. He's fine. He's like what? 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 So it's gonna, What's that? So, so it's gonna walk up and hit him with the. You said he was looking a little ragged. So he's gonna hit him with a with a um, cure light wounds. Just be like, oh, we just we just had to make sure you were who you said you were, buddy. You're. Uh, guess it. Uh, second. We just had to make sure you're okay, and uh, you know, and he's gonna just pat him on the, the back while he uh, heals him. And be like, no, you were just making sure you're good. You're good. Like that was stupid. Why did you do that? I've been waiting out there for freaking... He's, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> There's you healing a little bit. I've been waiting out there for hours for this damn thing to go away. I pop through, and I'm I'm in freaking nowhere. A big black space of nothing. What the... Oh, Gunwar, why'd you let him do that? He's like, Dave, don't look at me. I didn't know he was going to do it. I was just as pissed as you, but... And then Sebastian goes, yeah, it was a pretty good idea, though. You know, like, <laughs> if you were one of them, hey, it worked. If you're not, hey, it worked. And he kind of holds out a hand like he's going to give you a high five, Celeth. Celeth is totally down for a high five. Yeah, all right. That's brotherhood. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, who's your, who's, your, uh, who's your master? Uh, Taimora. Uh, well, I won't hold that against you. Helm's where it's at, brother. All right. <laughs> so, Brevin's going to repeat the same thing he did before. Okay, so, what happened? <laughs> What's going on? The other guys came through. I know Cudwar sent them. Where the F were you guys? I couldn't find you. Now you're here. I'm so confused. Somebody want to run that by him? I don't think he's too happy with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Point to Sewell or Tobin. You guys definitely know this. I mean, this is the most animated Brevin has been since you guys have seen him. He's normally kind of laid back, <laughs> kind of quiet. I mean, he is, is visibly and obviously kind of perturbed at this point about spending the past eight hours trying to find you guys. <laughs> and then, here you are. Ah, okay. Okay, he calmed down a little bit. And same same kind of before. Okay, Kudwar, can we go to Leshamar? And he says, no, I can't send you. I've already used that spell. Maybe Gallard back in the town can do that. Ticknook, we're good with you. He starts slowly walking away. Any other conversations or anything happened, guys? Well, somebody explained to Brevin what all happened with our situation. Cudwar doesn't really Tolkien know. Or Sewell? Yeah. Um, I'd yeah, like to know. ask him if he yeah. could identify this hat that I have. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the same place. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> All right. So let's kind of do the cliff note version of this so I can get you guys all back together, if that's okay. Yeah. Go for it. All right. So you guys all head back to Mokostone Village per Cudwar's request. You guys find Gillard. So unless there's something else you guys want to do within the town of Mukkosan that we can do a cliff note version of, Gillard's going to do the same spell the Kudwar did to transport you guys into, um, or right outside of Yeshomar. Oh, you guys are texting on the side. I wasn't even reading it. <laughs> Which is how my party used it. Uh, that's that's out uh, of character. So, uh, character, tell their conversation. Oh, okay. So that's nothing I need to read? No. Okay, all right. So, again, nothing else being done in Mucklestones for Silith, Usul, or Tillman? Nope. We're... Okay. Nope. That was it. So, cliff note oh. version. You guys all, all get transferred to yep. that exact same spot the rest of the group went. This time, Brevin is with you. This yep. time, the, the elves all recognize Brevin, and there's no hostilities, no racism, no nothing going on. Brevin walks up, gives, gives uh, Thulseal a hug. Matter of fact, you know what? Corn's going to be with him, because Corn went with Thulseal. 
So, Thosil, Quarn, and the rest of the Elven Rangers kind of lead you guys into the uh, uh, the big city. And at this point, the other guys have already gone to... So you guys took your long rest, they took their long rest, but yours would have been before theirs. So as you get there, the rest of the group is, is still asleep at their various locations. Twig rolls over. Brevin bad. Kill lots of people. <laughs> she called slotty people. <laughs> All right, so Toman, Sylvia, and... Uh, not Sylvia. Toman, Silith, and Usul. As you walk into town, you see the exact same thing. I'll explain to the other guys. These giant, you know, 40-foot tall walls along the outside over here. They lead you in, and first... Now, there's... Go ahead. So the guards are being nice to us all because Brevin's with us. Correct. As opposed to with everyone else, yeah, okay. Right, because they recognize Brevin, and that's why they were so freaked out about you guys, because there was nobody with you that they knew. Even though you said the name Arunu and Kudwar and Jodel and all that stuff, they just... They didn't care. Just be lucky they didn't cast Banishment on you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so anything you three would want to do so as, you come, as you're walking up to the to the doors into the city with uh, Thosil and Quorum. I'm sure Quorum would kind of fill you guys in on what all has happened up to this point. And that uh, they met with Arunu. She kind of explained, we're waiting for Brevin, blah, 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 all that. So anything else you guys want to role play or ask? Uh, just going to ask if, uh, if Jodel's arrived or if they've heard from him because he was supposed to meet us here. And that was while they were asleep. They sent Golrand up to the observatory to contact Jodel. And Thosil will share that he has not heard anything as of yet, but it also takes Golrand like you know, a couple hours to go up the steps to even get to his observatory, where his scrying <laughs> mechanism is. Okay, so no sign of Jodel yet. We're going to... We're gonna... We form the party, I think. Yeah, ask around, see where they may be staying, if there's a common inn or place of residence that they've taken up. Right, and Thosil would have shared the same thing that uh, Runa did with them, that they're all being, they got rooms uh, set up for him at the, the Murs Inn, and he'll kind of either point you in the right direction or he'll send one of his, uh, his scouts along with you guys to kind of escort you uh, around town and wherever else you want to go. Um kind of point things out to you of the city. you will explain about the different towers if someone asks about all the different religions and stuff that are there. And uh, those will also tell you guys that if uh, you guys also want an audience with Arunu, um, he can see what he can do to get hers. But she wanted to get with all you guys once you were here anyway, once Brevin got here. Okay? Excellent. So Korn's the only one that didn't take a long rest. But he passed his con save earlier. Okay. All right. So you guys got there before the other group, uh, the Silith group, got here before the other group finished their long rest. I'll say probably like a couple hours before the long rest is finished. So if there's anything else you want to do in those couple hours, or you just want to wait for the rest of the guys to wake up? I would want to just go to the place where they're staying and get myself settled. Okay. All right. It's been a crazy couple of days. <laughs> it hasn't even been a couple of days. It's literally been like 30 hours. Well, a couple of days. So two, two days, yes. Okay. All right, Diddy, we're getting some background noise from you. Hey, Diddy. All right, I am muting him. All right, Diddy, when you come back, let me know. I got you muted. Okay, so a couple hours go by, they'll, they'll escort you up to the, the mirror's end, if that's where you're going. You'll meet the same uh, older lady here, I guess I'll unhide her now so you guys can actually see her token, instead of me describing her every single time you meet her. There she is. And I can't remember, did I ever tell you guys her name? Hmm. She, she would have told you guys, Masari was her name. And she told you that her daughter works the evening shift at the mirror's end, she does, she works the day shift. Okay, but a couple hours pass. I'm assuming you just kind of got to wait there, maybe at your your nice view on the balcony overlooking the waterfalls. Um, let's see. So we got Silith, we got Usul, and we have Toman. Usul, roll me a history 
to see how much of this city you are aware of. Coming up. And roll it with advantage, since you are elf. Okay, good enough. Um, you're fairly familiar with the city. Um, you know the history behind it, how over the past, I guess it's probably been 250, maybe 300 years, this has been the headquarters of the uh, Circle of Leth. Um, you know that uh, it's primarily elven. The only people that are here are those that are invited. It's not really like a traveling or you know an in-between town because it is right in the middle of the freaking forest. Uh, the main way to get in and out of here is through this little lake and river that kind of runs right down the center of it. Um, with that history roll, you're actually probably going to know a little bit of the history behind the Baskin Steps as well. So do you want me to just share that with you out loud? Or you may kind of pull you off privately and tell you about those. Out loud. Okay. All right. So you, you've heard the history of these Baskin Steps. And the Baskin Steps are these, I think I marked on the map, these right here. Uh, I think I explained to you guys what they look like before. It's basically this giant row of stairs that go all the way up one side of the cliff. Except each... A uh, stair is probably you know, minimum 50 feet wide, maximum like 120 feet wide. And you know that the history behind these steps is these are somehow imbued with the ancestry, the legacy of those who call Yashomar home. And there is a, uh, a ritual that a descendant can do standing at the bottom of the steps. When he does this ritual, the stairs above him will all kind of light up. And there'll be like silhouettes of their ancestors. It's basically like a a ghostly family tree that goes up the entire stairs or the steps to show someone's an ancestry of all the people before them. His father, his grandfather, his great grandfather, his great 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 great. I mean, as far back as the original I guess, settler within Yashomar. But that's kind of one of the things that uh, that's why this is a mainly elven city and why they're so protective of it because it is a close-knit family and there's so much history here as well those that have no history or family here the baskin steps do not react in that same way like for yourself unless you have family here you can walk up the stairs do the ritual and there'll be nothing it's only for those that have you know ancestral heritage or bloodlines within the city uh what else would you know? I think that's probably about it. If something else comes up, I'll let you know. But you wrote a pretty decent on the history. Oh. Okay. Did you want me to take you off mute now? Okay, you're off mute now, Diddy. Thanks, man. No problem. All right, so a couple hours pass by, and your rest of the group will wake up. Um, unless you guys are calling for servants, no one's really going to wake you up. So what are you guys doing as you wake up? Urinating. <laughs> Thank God you're not Bet overlooking you a balcony. <laughs> uh, Professor P finds the nearest commode and does his business. Yeah, there'll be a chamber pot in there. If you need to do the, you know, the, the, the major business, it's down the hall. <laughs> Just the first business is all he does. Okay, yeah, you'll have a chamber pot in your room for that. <laughs> well, the rest of you. Twig is getting ready to face the day, getting dressed, getting washed up. Okay. Yeah. I get myself yeah, all cleaned up. I give Rufus a nice brush. And no, by the way, he is stuck to me like glue. He is not wandering off. He is like, nope, you're not getting out of my sight, buddy. Um, and then when uh, that's all done, I'll head down and grab some some food. In the... Well, if you ask the servants Dining. about, you know, uh, I guess bathing services, they'll tell you that on the, the lower level of the hotel is basically like a, a bunch of grottos down there. And actually it's into the pool that's being fed by the waterfall. And that's where a lot of the... Uh, I guess patrons, a lot of the people sing at the end will go for the morning and they're eating baths. So, but it's 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 like the Playboy Grotto, basically done all kinds of little crooks and cannies where you can go in there and parts of it are actually uh, heated, like through not not through it's natural, if it's magical or whatever. But there are certain portions of the pool that's actually heated as well. Very nice. Uh, 
Sylvia will make her way down to the wading pools with uh, Daisy. Mm. Can I get Daisy out in the open? Or are you still kind of keeping her hidden? No, she's she's kind of like perched on my shoulder, I guess. Okay, and as you walk down the stairs, a couple of times you're going down the stairs on the bottom, someone starts coming up the stairs, they look at you, and they, <laughs> and they turn back around and go back down the stairs. <laughs> so like, keep the distance from you. Actually, go down to the uh, go down to the grotto, walking through the pools, and one person kind of says something under his breath in Elvish. Give me a perception check if you want. Yeah. Uh, pers- <laughs> I'm trying not to Is be there racist. There's a part signs yeah. around that says elf and non-elf. <laughs> <That's actually Shit. laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> You hear one. You hear, uh, you hear one woman as you're going to one of the crowd. She goes, "What's she doing with that filthy beast in here?" What? I, and she kind of gets out of the pool and she walks over to the other side of the grotto, like another fifty feet away. Other folks don't uh, say anything, but you, you kind of get the same impression. Nobody really wants to be near or around you with that thing on your shoulder. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> you got a whole little grotto spot all to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And whoever else joins you. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that's it. And then if I have time, I'd like to get this hat identified. <laughs> yeah. Who are you asking? But, uh, just hanging out. Okay. Uh, the party that just showed up, as these folks start kind of getting up moving around, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll inform the party just got up and the party that got there that, okay, the rest of the party's awake and... You guys want to meet for breakfast? What you know, not breakfast. This is technically going to be evening time for all of you guys. Around five or six o'clock, that's what I recall. Once your long rest are over with, so it's about dinner time for you guys. I still have food in my my room. Just <laughs> got all stuff for you other. <laughs> right, you guys tell me. You guys are gonna try to get back together? You gonna go keep going your separate ways? What do you want to do? I'll head That's back to the end. <laughs> Oh yeah, Dinamar fell asleep. I forgot he fell asleep back in the the tower. So eventually, someone's gonna come through at closing time for you, Diddy. Okay, yeah. uh, sir. Excuse me, sir. Kind of you know, softly, you know, nudge you on your shoulder. It's it's close. It's, yep. it's closing time, sir. Okay. Oh, okay. I I think your friends are over at the the Mers End. You need me to, you know, show you the way. Uh, he'll pick up his tea and drink it and say, "Oh, that's to be cold." All right. <laughs> And um and thank her very much. I'll give her um I'll give her five gold pieces as well and say that's for the for the service of the church. And I will toddle downstairs go to the inn after asking where it is. <laughs> you walk outside, you'll kinda of point over one direction, sir. I it's okay, I can walk you over there. I gotta go by the the marketplace anyway. They're they're open a bit later, so follow me and I'll oh. I'll escort you. Oh, thank you. So, and along the way, she'll ask you more questions, you know, about Eldath. Mm-hmm. Like she's still trying to get you to prove. I'll get one or two right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, I take out my pillow, my little plush pillow I've got that I sleep on. I go, there you go, there, Eldath. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a few things that have a symbol on it as well. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's that. That's yeah. that's a sure sign of a believer. Yeah, <laughs> it is. All right. Um. 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 Did you have any other questions that you wanted me to tell you about Eldath? No, she's just going to chit-chat about everything. She's going to ask you, you know, where you came from, what you were doing, about your quest coming yeah. up, and how she heard yeah, about all that I'll stuff. And yeah, She's somewhat enamored with you, but she's still kind of on the fence about whether or not you're really a follower of Eldath. <laughs> I'll say, well, all I, all I can tell you what I remember you used to be, or was a I like... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Protector uh-huh. of Rivers? Streams, mm-hmm. uh, the ancient places. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, okay, Just... yep. That's what. It, yep, that's some what you got on your pillow there, right? Uh, wait. Let me turn this bit around. Oh yeah, and there's also like vines on the outside as well. So she must like uh, look. Look, they look like ferns. Mm-hmm. So she likes ferns. Yep. Um. Yep. Okay, I think you. I think you got me. I, I'm more of a fighter for the god, and less of a priest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sort of went to sleep during a lot of the classes, but rest assured, um, I'll I'll put my hand on her and um, and uh, let light 
sort of just um, pass on to her. Say, see? Oh, she casts a light cantrip? Yeah. Okay. She kind of takes, she kind of puts her hand on top of your hand, and you see you do the exact same thing to your hand. Yeah. Neat tricks, right? Yeah, we're the same. <laughs> yeah. We're the same. <laughs> Okay, I, when I'm Eldath spell L D A T H right. <laughs> she, she'll, say, she'll, she'll say it again, but with the elvish letters. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you said Eldath was a boy. You said him. I I thought she was a her. He can be whatever he wants to be. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I... You've taught me something. <laughs> she kind of chuckles. <laughs> All right. That's probably, that's probably why my religion's so rubbish. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> I'll just walk with that. All right, so Brevet is going to want to try to round you guys up as soon as possible, even though he is freaking exhausted. Look, <laughs> spending his time on an plane looking for everybody, not taking a nap. So you guys can tell he's, he's his ass is dragging. He's like, all right. He'll get you guys all together, at least at the main meeting hall or something at this Merz Inn. And, uh, Sylvia, I know you said you wanted to get something identified. Um, this is Brevin talking. Correct. This is Brevin talking. He says, I'll, we'll, I, I'll see to it that we take care of that, but we need to, need to rest up and we need to go for, at first light. Okay. We can't, we can't wait any longer that we've, we lost a day and then kind of glances over towards Silith. And, uh, so we need to make haste. So, gather what you can. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go see Arunu now. I'm sure she's going to want to have one final counsel with us before we leave in the morning. But, is there any questions that I can possibly answer for you guys at this point? Where is Jodel? Jodel. And you see him kind of rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He says, Jodel was... Kudwar said he was going to look for portals, right? Mm. But he also said to meet him at Yeshelmar. Well, he said to meet me at Yeshelmar. Right? So it's kind of, That's what I so remember. Kind of rolled, rolled back yeah, yeah. On that. yeah. He's, he's supposed to stay in town. I think he's supposed to stay in. They'll need one person in power over there to take care of the place. <sighs> okay. It's good to see you guys, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good sleep? We We'd all slept before we got here. <laughs> Brevin's like, no, I didn't. Oh. Oh. So I think we better sleep before we go. All right, so I'm going to... If you guys don't need anything from me, again, I think I explained this before, so tomorrow I'll take you to the... And it kind of pulls you guys all in closer. Gets a little table just for you guys. So I'll I'll bring you guys tomorrow to the... the I bring you guys to, to to limbo tomorrow. I promise. Just don't make that public knowledge. Mm. Uh, and I'll I'll get you there. But I need I need to rest. But I'm gonna go see Arunu, and then I'm gonna get some rest, and I'll see you guys at first light. Just meet down here first light. What? Yeah. I'll say I, I, I told. I'll go. You Benny. Okay. I'll just sort of say to him, I've I've told her a fair bit. Um, she might be after one of the stones from the Vlad's head um, or chest or wherever it is. Um, if she wants one, I'll leave one here for her. Don't don't take him out of the bag. Here, just yeah, no. give give the bag to me. I'm I'm gonna go see her anyway, so give the bag to me. Okay. If she needs it, I'll I'll give it to her. Is that okay? That's more than okay. Okay. And you can hear and sense the uh, exhaustion. That's in Brevin's voice as he's kind of having this conversation with you guys. Lucille, were you going to ask something? What supplies should we bring? He kind of sits there and ponders for a minute. He's thinking, he says, uh, just, I, we, we, there's, a, there's a trade port city in Shrotkit lore, so just whatever you think you'll need. And then once we talk to the Gith, if there's something else we need, I'm sure we can get it there in their, their trade port. 
uh, obviously the, the obvious bring some healing potions uh, if you got anything else that you think may be beneficial just just bring it really it, it's it's your skill set that we need the most maybe some invisibility um, potions uh, I'll, I'll look at him and I'll go yeah you too good I'll, I'll less good yeah uh, so I'll just take the bag and I'll say come on <laughs> you're about to fall over so I'll I'll, I'll I'll say do you want me to pick you up I'm strong enough no no that's I, I don't I don't need that kind of no I don't need to be carried all right. thank you I was gonna fly you there but all right let's go no, I I'll be okay I just see right. Runo get some sleep I'll meet you guys here at first light all right you guys good Mm-hmm. Okay, so he walks off across that bridge, goes out over the uh, the misty waters at the below, at the bottom of the waterfall, starts making its way towards. Uh, I don't know if he told you or no, she told you where her main headquarters is, at the top of the Baskin Steps. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> just before he gets out of range, I'll ping him just to make sure I know. I don't. I I wouldn't know what Silith did. Just to make sure I know he was face to face with the demon so I'm just going to make sure he's not a fiend I mean, I'm pinging him pinging him with what yeah with my divine sense oh okay yeah you're not get, picking up any kind of vibes of him being anything other than what he is yep no worries I'll let him go there okay alright so he wanders off anything else you guys want to do for the for the night again it's about 5 o'clock you see the, the dinner rush crowd is starting to kind of come and make their way into the Murz Inn Should we go grab some healing potions and invisibility stuff before they close the shops? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, let's stock up and then when he wakes up, we'll go. I'll ask the lady, the proprietor, where would you go to buy um, potions and scrolls? Uh, Scrolls are not that common. That's typically something you may get from one of the, the temples here in town. Or possibly... <laughs> he smacks his head and dull. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Goron up on the observatory deals in that stuff too, but it's, there's not really a shop per se that does that. But And Sylvia, I'm assuming you're there with the group. Yes. Okay, so Sylvia probably would have shared with you where she got her potions from. Mm. Yeah. Downstairs in the uh, great big trade hall. I forget the name of Oh, okay. All right. Um, we'll go there. I, one of the priestesses that, from the Temple of Tars is just wandering around here doing her shopping, so I could ask her if she's got some stuff as well, and I'll go back with her and grab it. But, yeah, let's just go grab some stuff, and then we're done. I'm ready. The acolyte that you are with, did he stop off at the central market, basically the, the food market, where some oh, of okay. taking yeah. it's more like the, the mall, so to speak, for... Oh, yeah, we'll go to the mall. (laughs) (laughs) Go to the mall. That's all the teenagers are hanging out, you know, (laughs) selling soft pretzels. (laughs) (laughs) Where's the orange Julius? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So is the whole group (laughs) heading to the shopping mall of Yeshomar? We're going to walk in, like, you know, you see those uh, scenes where, like, all the guys line up the other guys line up. Yeah, do this. All right. So, what's your intention at the uh, the mall? Is it mainly about potions? Yeah, potions and scroll. Yeah, potions to make us invisible, and potions that make us heal. Yeah, they didn't have anything magical item wise, did they? Uh, who are you asking? Um. Just out of character, I, I I seem to recall the conversation there. They there wasn't a whole lot in the town. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I shared it with somebody else that uh, there's not really like a magic shop here. There are people that have magic items, but it's not from like being bought at a shop somewhere. It's like where they've either been handed down to them through their uh, ancestry, or it's people that were former adventurers that found them out somewhere in the world. Okay. Yeah, they, just the uh, uh, potions place for me then. Okay. All right. So unless you guys want to role play any of that, 
just give me a, a, a quick rundown of what you guys are expecting to get because you're catching them right at closing time. Just let me know what you're looking for, and I'll let you know if they have it. Uh, invisibility potions, heroism yeah. potions, and healing potions. Okay, invisibility, there will be a few. I think, Sylvia, did I give you a number before, Sylvia? Have I uh, no number. They, uh, there is no number. You catch them at the end, they have three of them, and I think, hell, what did I say, Sylvia? 250 is what I said, I think? Uh, 250, yeah, correct. 250, 250 gold piece per... And you said heroism yeah. potions, right? Yes. They also have three of those. And <laughs> 250. <laughs> I'm just winging it now. And then, then um, healing. And the last one would be like a potion of speed. Something that makes us quicker to get the hell out of Dodge. A potion of what? Uh, speed. Something that makes us quicker. So if someone needs to run, they can run. Yeah, she got a few more of those. She got five of those, and those are going to be 150 each. I have a thing I'm giving you guys some screaming deals, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Arano discount. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, two healing potions, and I'm going to ask about uh, any offensive uh, potions that they might have. For instance, I picked up a potion of fire breath. Uh, potion of fire breath is what you're looking for? No, I'm going to ask about offensive potions uh, similar to potion of fire breath or, you know, something that I can deal damage. Okay. Uh, roll me a D100. That was for uh, Usul. D100. Yep. We're going to... D100. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. I was like, wow, that's really low. Oh, wait a minute. That's a D4. <laughs> uh, I forgot how to roll. It should be on the dice tower, is not? Uh, well, I see throw me a, a D, D20. Throw me a D10 twice, then. A D10 twice. Yep. 94. Wow, that's a pretty good number. Okay, then. All right, so they have four such potions. Now, give me a second. Now, i got to pull something out of my ass. Um... <laughs> Oh, two alchemist fire, a holy water, and let's see what other kind of potions I can pull out of my ass. And I'm not going to get anything outlandish because this is for general purpose of the folks around here. And you said offensive. Like offensive, like, ooh, I don't like that, or... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nope, nope, nope. That's not offensive. Oh, what the hell, I'll throw in one of these. Once I gotta roll another dice. And a potion of hill giant strength. Okay, and those uh, alchemy fire, um, how much are those? Uh, 100 gold pieces. Oh, I'll take them both. What so, do they do? Uh, I don't know, I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up. I can, that's all right. If it's, um, yeah, I can look that up. And then uh, can I get two regular healing potions as well? Yeah, those are 50, 50 apiece. Is that what I said before? I said 50 or 40? I'll say 40. Okay, so 280 for me. Okay, were you wanting the uh, the other two? The Shit, I forgot what potions I said now. There was two... Shit. Whatever I said, you got it. <laughs> 
uh, 100 bucks for the, uh, uh, for the, crap, what did I say? It sucks getting old. Sucks getting old. Alchemy. Those were hundred. Holy water. Alchemist. That's what it was. Yeah, holy water was a hundred gold pieces, and then the potion of uh, of hill giant strength is going to be uh, two hundred fifty. Yeah, I, I don't need those. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Uh, healing potions, as far as healing potions, you guys can buy. I guess as much as you want. Uh, technically. If you buy more than four, you run a chance of it breaking in your backpack, so I would say your limit's going to be four. They're going to have up to 20 regular healing potions, and let's see how many greater healing. I only got four greater healing. 20 regular, four greater healing is, is their entire stock. And I'm not trying to metagame anybody, but I know a couple of you guys are freaking loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Rich people. Okay, anybody else? Okay, I'm assuming I said no. Looks like it. Alright, anything else you guys want to do during the, the night? Because Brevin's going to go see the Renu. He don't know where he's going. He's going to crash after that. All right, I'll take that as a no. All right, <laughs> so that may be a good t stopping point, I think, at that point. Um, I'm assuming you guys are probably just going to kind of take it easy for the night, maybe have some dinner. Um, if you guys think of something else you're doing tonight, that's fine. Let me know. But we've reached the three-hour and 15-minute mark, so I'll probably want to go ahead and call it now. Um, um, go ahead. Nothing, I was just saying okay. Okay. All right, so I'll go and cliff note this. If you guys want to change your mind about doing something during the night, it's fine. Let me know. But I'm assuming at this point you guys are going to take another rest here at the Murs Inn. And then in the morning, at first light, when you guys go to meet Brevin, he'll also be sitting there with uh, Urunu and the entire uh, inner circle. And they've got uh, one a small room of the, the meeting hall at the main level uh, kind of blocked off. It's a separate room. And they're all meeting you there privately before you guys get ready to take off. Still no Jodell, but it's the entire inner circle that you guys met when you first came in, along with Brevin. Okay? All right. That sounds good. All right. That sounds good, man. Okay. Another roleplay heavy uh, episode. I apologize for that, maybe, but, well, your banishment worked. <laughs> <laughs> no need to apologize. Good session. Nah, I don't want to apologize. I was like, damn it, I worked real hard on that guy. I was going to have fun with that guy. I had all kinds of special things planned for him, and... Boof, he's gone. <laughs> so, good session, guys. Uh, we'll meet again in uh, two weeks. I uh, shouldn't have any issues with that in my work schedule. It's starting to look like uh, getting easier. Um, but besides that, thanks for playing, guys. Had fun. And we'll see you soon. All right. Hey, man, thank see you, guys. Thanks, bro. Good night, all. Night, yeah. Night.